All right, let's see. Have I rotated this PDF correctly? That's rotated, and that's rotated. I think that's rotated too. Yeah. It's all rotated correctly. Funky microphone. Ah, shit. Okay, hang on. Is that better? Am I sounding correct now? That's better. Yeah, this is this, my sound card. It does that sometimes. I need, just needed to reboot it. Uh, hello, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Very Oh, thank you for that super chat, Salticus. Um, thank you for the birthday wishes. Uh, this is kind of spur at the moment. I didn't really, I didn't have a plan as much um, for this. It was just I figured, yeah, let's just let's just let's just do a thing, because uh, I needed to do something now. Um, before we get started, we're gonna hang out for five, ten minutes ish, like before we actually get into the uh, before we actually get into the tier list stream. Um, and the reason we're doing that is because YouTube notifications are garbage; they're terrible, uh, and people like will not be informed of the stream even starting until until I've been live for like 10 minutes. So I'm just going to give people time to show up and and to and then to you know come see what's happening. Thank you, thank you Josh Young for that super chat. That's kind of you. Um and you know once once it sort of seems like people have had a chance to to show up, we'll start talking about some Star Guardian skins. But in the meantime, you just look at look look at the pretty background and listen to the music. Is the music okay? Is the is the volume sort of all right? And thank you for all the happy birthdays. That's very kind of you. The music is quiet. Okay, uh, we can turn that up a bit then. Is that better? More audible? This is two hours later than usual. Yeah, Love K. I, I wasn't kind of. I kind of wasn't planning on streaming. Um, I wasn't planning on streaming anything, but I figured like hell. Let me give. Oh, it's supposed to say happy birthday, but thank you for the super chat, Josh Young. Um, I wasn't planning on streaming anything, but then I figured, fuck it. I I, I don't have anything else I need to do. Like it's either this or sit around writing scripts for shorts and, and like work, um, which maybe I shouldn't be doing. So uh, let's just start, talk about some Star Guardians anyway. And I see people are showing up. Uh, certainly the, the the little number that says concurrent viewers uh, slowly grows. So yeah. Magical girl anime made me trans. I think that's a relatively common experience, honestly. Um. Am I Danish or Norwegian? Yeah, Dansk. <laughs> I am Danish. I I live in that particular part of Scandinavia. Any champs you'll think be, would be good for Star Guardian? Yes, but we'll talk about that when we get into it. We will talk about that when we get into it. Hey, thank you, Nikki. Let me just bestow you with the power of the wrench. You don't need to do anything with it. I just think it would be funny. Um, had a good birthday? Yeah, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Don't worry. Just saw your ditto short and might I say you have a lovely singing voice. Yeah, like a lot of the people on the shorts channel are surprised that I can sing. Whereas anyone who follows my Let's Plays knows that I never fucking stop. Um, <laughs> like I can't shut up. So that's been kind of funny. Greetings from Colombia. Well, hello to Colombia. Isn't that kind of... Is it early for you guys? It would be. It would be like eight, seven hours ahead or behind. Something like that. In a th uh, 
Natano J, thank you for that super chat. That's very kind of you. And Iceman Edika as well. Thank you. And oh, Christian Shop. Oh no! Uh, happy birthday, your videos. <laughs> thank you, Christian Shop. And and uh, J12, thank you for those super chats. That's very kind of you. What am I gonna eat for my birthday? I've had sandwiches. Um, nothing special tonight because I'm going out with my family to eat dinner tomorrow. Most smoochable non-human character in League. I don't know. Like, it sort of depends on what you're into, I guess. <laughs> like, some people like Velkos. Some people like Ivern. Takes all kinds. Will there be a VOD? Yes, the VOD will be here on the channel. Don't you worry about that. Uh, happy birthday, Trans Talia confirmed. Essentially, yeah, we'll talk about that when we get to Talia as well. Like, just how hard uh, the Star Guardian skin has really been pushing that part of her character. Um... Which I think is quite, it's, it's to some extent quite funny. Will all Star Guardians be ranked? Yes, assuming I have remembered to put them all into the tier list maker thing. All of them, including Urgot, including the Wild Rift and Le Legends of Runeterra skins, and so on. No, we've not started yet, uh, Kenneth. Um, I mean, we'll, we're hanging out for like 10 minutes to let give people time to show up because like I can see the concurrent viewer number thing and it's like, it's still climbing. So people are still showing up because notifications are so slow. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna chill. We're just gonna have a chill time until, uh, until, until people have had time to show up. Happy birthday from another Leo. Well, thank you very much, Nightpunk. Yes, Star Guardian Urgot is included. Don't you worry about that. Chip not being Talia's familiar was a horrible missed opportunity. I didn't even think about. Oh god, yeah. Fuck, no, they should have done that. Ah, oh, god damn it. I'm gonna bring that up when we get to her get to her then. Damn, you're right, Nikki. Shit. How the fuck was it not Chip? Oh my god, that should have been Chip. It should have been Star Guardian Chip. That would have been so good. Oh, that would have been fantastic. Why did you tell me that? It's ruined the whole thing. <laughs> now I have to put it in the F tier. Um no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. What do I think about the Star Guardian aesthetic? Well, we'll talk about that as we get into it. As we get into it. But yeah, uh, we've been going for about seven and a half minutes. We're going to stick around just chatting for uh, another two and a half minutes, and then we'll actually get started on the tier list. And thank you for all the happy birthday wishes as well. Hey, just joined. Happy birthday. Did you get my message? Uh, if you were sent a super chat, I can't see it in my thing here, so I don't know. Um, oh, Elan, thank you for that super chat. That's kind of you. And indeed, trans rights. We'll talk about that when we get to Talia. Am I got gonna make comparison between each batch of Star Guardians? I mean, this is pretty. Um, this is pretty. Uh off the cuff. I have I haven't made a lot of plans. I've just gotten all the the assets and made the like made the tier list. You can see it here. Um I just I just put together all the assets, made the tier list and then we'll just chat. We'll just um we'll just talk. Oh, Mr. Cool Beans. Don't send those kinds of messages. It got it got caught in the filter fortunately, but don't do that, please. It's going to time you out there. Um Tarek Ware, yeah, I mean, Ter we, we will also talk about, um, like, other champions that it would make sense to have Star Guardian skins for, and we'll talk about whether there should be more Star Guardians. Like, may maybe we have enough now, maybe that's enough Star Guardians, maybe we don't need more of them, maybe we could do with a few more of them, hmm, hmm? Um, so we'll figure that out. No VTuber model? Yeah, not today. I don't have my webcam set up, so it can't capture me. Um, I, I, it's somewhere in a box somewhere. I need to get it out. Um, oh, uh, Ariana Ispel, I missed that super chat. Appreciate how queer inclusive this channel is. As is I mean, that's the fucking least I could do, <laughs> frankly. Like, that's the... I mean, thank you for the super chat, but I, I don't think I deserve applause for that one. That's, that's like, like basic human decency. Are we talking about Dark Star as well? No, Dark Star and Star Guardian are not, to the best of my knowledge, actually connected. Although there is like a little bit of, of sort of 
overlap, maybe, um, between the... Oh, good lord, more super chats. Uh, happy birthday, League needs to make money, so I get why Lux Ariestral has so many skins, but do you like deep skin pools for a few champs or prefer more variety? I mean, I th <laughs> skins are the business model of League of Legends, so I'm kind of like, I don't get that much hung up on certain champions not getting that many skins. Uh, like, I know it's disappointing, but, you know, it, I don't get very much hung up on it. I don't, I don't think about that much. Imagine having your birthday on a Monday. Yeah, I know, Gabu. I know. Uh, how do I feel about the Madoka Magicka trend with Star Nemesis? We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that whole thing about the darkness creeping into the Star Guardians. Um, and Rashra, thank you for that super chat. Right, we've been going for about 10 minutes, which means I think it's time to actually look at the tier list itself. And uh, welcome along. Hello, this is the actual start of the stream. <laughs> Uh, I see there's... Oh, okay, there's 1,200 of you all. It's It was like 500 just a few seconds ago. Um, welcome along. Hi, hello. Thank you. Uh, th thanks for showing up. The Undead Mage, thank you for that super chat. How's the Star Guardian A1 allegory for communism? <laughs> it's not, um, actually. I, I if, if I were to make that argument, and I'm not gonna on this stream, but if I were to make an argument like that, I would probably argue that it's much more... Uh, liberal, in like in the in the classic sense of liberalism, not in the in the American political sense, but like liberal in the sense of like individualist and like. But uh, the discussion maybe I will never have ever because <laughs> I don't want the comments. Happy birthday, says Tic Tac. I know it's a little off topic. Any idea when the next Elden Ring will be out? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Soon as I can. I have a lot of backlog that I'm 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 trying to work my way through, so it's it's on the back burner. Uh, Gandalf the Fabulous says. I love your content, especially in the second channel. Happy birthday. Thank you very much for that super chat. Thank you, Niras. Oh, God. I'm going to be stuck reading super chats. Um, Niras, thank you. Uh, shorts on the various skin lines themselves. Yeah, something like that, maybe. Niras. Vi M, thank you for that super chat. Any opinions on Star Guardians aside? I always love seeing the influx of fan designs for other champions. Yes, the fan art for Star Guardians is like the best part. And Haru, thank you for that super chat. Anyway, we'll start with something that's fairly simple to categorize, which is Star Guardian Lux. Um who is pretty perfect, in my opinion. Um, like, she was a very natural, natural, natural fit for this kind of skin. And, like, there's a reason it became instantly her most popular skin, essentially, uh, upon release. It's because this is, yeah, this makes sense. Uh, this is perfectly put together. Like, it makes sense for Lux. It makes sense for all of her abilities. It makes sense for who she is as a character already. Like, sort of the bubbly, cheerful, like, Genki girl sort of archetype. Um, so, like, Star Guardian Lux is, in and of itself, pretty much perfect for the character that it's applied to. Now, the interesting thing also is, that like, Star Guardian Lux, and, and most people, I think, know this, she was never meant to be a series. Um, like, there was never meant to be, uh... Like, there was never meant to be 150 million Star Guardians. It was a one-off. It was a, like, it was like a one-time thing. Um, and something people maybe don't know about Riot internally is that for quite a long time internally at Riot, there was a lot of resistance towards doing anime-inspired skins. <clears throat> like, there were executives, and this is stuff like, like I've heard through the grapevine and Riot X rioters have discussed it on Twitter. There were executives and people like in the upper suites of, of, of the company who were like, well, I'm not into anime and I'm a core gamer, so why would our audience like it? Like, they sort of just, they had this assumption that the League of Legends gamer audience would not care about anime and especially wouldn't care about any kind of girly anime. And so getting a skin like Lux, Star Guardian Lux through um, was kind of kind of a small miracle. They, it was one of those small passion projects that someone pushed for really hard internally and they went, yeah, okay, fine, put it out there. Um, but like Riot internally had this like, among the, the leadership had this thing of like anime, who cares about, and no one likes anime, gamers don't like anime, which they were hilariously wrong about. Um, <clears throat> the same people who Mel had to fight to get high fashion films. Yeah, that's the other thing is like, skin lines like Coven suffered the same thing. Is like the executives at Riot were like, what, fashion skins? Who the fuck cares about fashion skins? Like, th that core gamers don't care about that kind of stuff. And obviously, and the same thing with KDA. Like, when people were pitching K-pop uh, internally at Riot, like, the executives were like, what? K-pop? Who, who the f gamers don't give a shit about K-pop? No one cares about that. Like, no one likes that. Uh, so there was a lot of resistance to it internally, and it took a lot of hard work to even get it out. And Lux, originally as Star Guardian Lux, was only ever meant to be a one-off. And... I don't think Riot expected her to be as popular as she was, but 
obviously she was because she was so popular. And this is also something you can tell in her character design is that Lux was never really designed to spawn a skin line. That was never really the point of her. The point of Lux, Star Guardian Lux, is to be a Sailor Moon reference with a little bit of, of like card capture Sakura, a little bit of uh, Madoka Magica, a little bit of like a little bit of all of the sort of most popular, sort of most obvious uh, Tokyo Mew Mew, like well referenced Magical Girl franchises and the uh, what's that one called? Precure, also Precure, um, like just a, just a bunch of those like general visual references, sort of nested inside what's primarily a Star, uh, uh, Sailor Moon reference, and that was sort of supposed to be it. It was never supposed to be the basis um, for the aesthetic of a whole other skin line, and that's something we'll see as we. Oh, that's the wrong thing I put in front of your screen there. Um, which is something we'll see as we. Okay, let's stop doing that. As uh, as we progress into the other skins in the skin line, because it, as the Star Guardian line develops. You can see it changes um, over time. It sort of it 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 um, like it develops an aesthetic for itself that references a lot of magical girl stuff, but which is also more unique to Star Guardians themselves, um, for better and for worse. I think like there, there are times when that sort of kind of doesn't work. Are we going alphabetical or release date? We're going release date. We're going season by season. Anyway, I think maybe there were some super chats. Uh, I missed, so... I don't know how to pronounce that name, but Chris Bogac? Um, happy birthday, can't wait for another six-hour lore video when the new God of War drops. Yeah, yeah, oh, man, I'm kind of excited for that. Um, Tinky Winky, happy birthday from Brazil. Feliz aniversario, you are a great man, love you, man. Thank you for that super chat. Um, Ize, happy birthday, thank you. To have some ninja, Star Guardian Lux was the first time the community proved pretty and cute was wanted. So happy the original artist Saren has got it approved. Also happy birthday, Sky. Thank you very much. And yeah, like that's that's something like League of Legends, <clears throat> like the business side of League of Legends just wasn't aware of. Like they didn't understand that even like even people who aren't women who play League of Legends might like to have a cute magical girl skin for their character. Like mind blown. That's a thing that can happen. Oh, thank you for that sticker, the Hulk. And Godfi, thank you very much. Am I planning on doing that One Piece stream someday? Probably, but not today. Okay. Uh, I wonder if my tea is cold enough to sip. Ooh, ha. Ooh, just barely. Ha. Oh, that's a little too hot. <clears throat> right then. Moving on. After Lux sort of proved that the Star Guardian line could be popular. That's when eventually internally, like there was enough pressure, there was enough push for the rioters who cared about this stuff to get the push to like, let's make a full skin line out of this. And so Star Guardian Lux, who didn't have any real lore, like there really wasn't any backstory or lore to her, except ah, she's a Star Guardian in Valorant City. Like sort of, again, vague Sailor Moon references without any sort of real weight behind them. That's when Riot find, like uh, decided to introduce the next line of Star Guardians. That's when we get your Lulu, Janna, Jinx, and Poppy, who become Lux's primary team of Star Guardians. And so the retcon is created that, okay, Lux is not a one-off. Like the, the, the very first Lux skin is like season one, air quotes, season zero, the pilot um, of the Star Guardian anime that we all have to imagine in our minds because Riot refused to actually give it to us for real. Um, <clears throat> where Lux has be been made a Star Guardian and she's sort of figuring out how to do all this stuff alone and eventually she has to put together a team, right? Eventually it's like, I, I need help, I need people to help me fight these monsters and keep the world safe and so on and so forth and that's when she goes out and finds or they are sent to her the other four uh, companions that she has. And this is when Star Guardians finally begins to sort of, you can see the beginnings of the development of a style that is specific to Star Guardians rather than just being references to Magical Girl enemy. And because of that, these four um, new Star Guardians, they do look distinctly dissimilar to Lux in certain ways. Like there, there's definitely an effort put into their character designs to give them all an individual unique style that will stand apart from Lux so that they're not so that they're not wearing quite so much the exact same costume as for example the Sailor Guardians are or the the the, the Sailor Senshi rather um from Star Guardians and so we get the line of the diff of 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 these four and i would say that Poppy probably need or Lulu rather 
probably needs a little more work. So at least in my opinion, I think Lulu is like, there's a lot of good interesting stuff about her, but I'm just not really taken with the outfit itself. Like it's this sort of white suit overcoat thing with like a green skirt. And like she has, uh, like she had, like the long green hair is a good feature, but I also feel like her character design is constricted a lot by the limitations of her character model. Like her character model has the big hat, it has like the very long hair, and you kind of have to make the design to fit the character model, which is old and clunky and just not great. Like Lulu very badly needs a visual update. And so I feel like her character design comes out with like, some limitations in terms of the detail that's on it, in terms of, of sort of the interest in individuality, because Luna's personality, right, is that she's like the airhead, the weird one, like like much the same as she is in, in ordinary uh, League of Legends. She's sort of the, the weird, crazy one who says all this, the strange stuff, but who's also sort of magically attuned to the world. She's, she's the odd one, the oddball of the group, right? And that just doesn't come across very much in her character design. Like, unlike the other characters, like, where you can see that Janna, in the way that she's styled, is the sort of more mature, like, the big sister of the group. You can see that Jinx is the, like, unhinged, chaotic wild card. It sort of comes across in her fashion. You can see that Poppy is, like, the serious-minded warrior. Lulu just... Yeah, her personality just doesn't come across to me. It needed a little bit more work. Lulu needs a visual update, and when she gets that, I hope they'll revisit her Star Guardian character design, because as it is right now, I think it's in the needs work category. Let's see. Oh, God, there was another super chat. Uh, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh! First time catching a stream from you actually watching the Belveth premiere. I blame you for getting me back into League and, and Legends of Runeterra. I'm very sorry about that. My apologies. I, I, I want to stress, it is never, ever, ever my intention with any of my content to encourage anyone to play League of Legends. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Right, I need some tea. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna run my voice out. So, moving on. We we can talk about the, the rest of the team. As I alluded to, I think there is some good character design going on in the other Guardians in this line. Janna, for example, like you do get the sense from, especially the way her dress is designed, and also just from the fact that she has the longer, lankier proportions. She looks more adult, just in terms of the way that she's proportioned. Um, she like does a good job of looking like the sort of slightly aloof, wiser, older sister character of the group, and that's certainly also how she's cast in the lore, is that she's the one who's a little bit older, who's been a Star Guardian for longer, who knows some of the dark secrets at the heart of the Star Guardian universe, but she just she's not saying anything um, to the new group of Star Guardians she's hanging out with, maybe because she's trying to protect them or something. Like, But there is this sort of air of maturity, there is this sort of air of, of being a slightly older, more experienced character along her. And I think, like, the long staff and, like, the sort of, like, the... Like, they're relatively conservative, but, like, nicely put together dress. I think it does a good job of sort of telling that bit of storytelling. Uh, someone says in chat that it also makes you a little bit boring. Yeah. Uh, she's not she's not the most exciting Star Guardian visually. Absolutely not. Like, Jinx is much more interesting and exciting, but Janna sort of plays that part in the group dynamic very well. And this is also where we begin to see the introduction, and this is something that starts pretty much immediately, of the dark secret of the heart. Like, th this dark secret of Star Guardians. Ooh, they burn out, and like, ah, oh, they can fall, and like, there's all this sort of they start to imply the darkness at the heart of the Star Guardian universe with Janna very, very early on without really actually developing any of it. Um, like, it doesn't really get developed until... Not even Ari, really. It's not, not really until Zoe shows up that it really gets developed upon. Um, but they begin to hint at it. This idea that there's a little bit of darkness somewhere deep in, like, somewhere hidden in the whole in the whole Star Guardian thing. So Janna, for me, is like, she's in the okay tier. And that's partly, again, comes down to some limitations in, in terms of what her model can even do. Because her character model is very, very old and in desperate need of another visual update. Um, so, like, I, I, like, I like the idea of, like, the huge, like, flowing hair, like, flying in the wind and stuff, but when you look at the actual character model and the way that that's, that's actually applied, it's like, it's not, it doesn't look great because Janna's model is just so old and clunky. Oh, uh, there was another super chat. There was a couple, actually. The Hulk asks if I'm gonna review the Pajama Guardians, too. Yeah, they're right here. Oh, wait, you can't see my mouse. 
Hang on. Why can't you see my mouse? There we go. Aha, there it is. Now you can see my mouse, which is pointing at the Pajama Guardians, which are right here. Um, And as Spectrum said, happy birthday. Thank you very much. And Fel just sent a super chat. Oh, good Lord. Happy birthday. Enjoying listening while playing World of Final Fantasy on Switch. Thanks for the escape and the education. Well, you're very welcome. You are very welcome. Um, so, yeah. And I have half a suspicion, as, uh, as Uncover points out in chat, I have half a suspicion also that Janna is the reason. Well, Janna and Lulu both, I suppose. Like, Janna and Lulu together are the reason that Star Guardians have familiars at all. Because Janna has, of course, Sefer, like the little bluebird that always flies around her. And Lulu has Pix. And they kind of needed to be represented in the character models of the Star Guardians because, like, because they had to be. Because uh, because these characters use um, those parts of their character model to do some of their abilities. Like, Janna cast cast Sefer to do some of, some of her spells. So they needed to be there. So I think, really, the early two mascot characters were invented just kind of because, oh yeah, these characters need them. Like, eh, which is why, um, like, which is probably why Jinx gets the the little duo for her guns, but like Poppy doesn't have anything and Lux doesn't have anything. It wasn't really considered mandatory at that point. Um, it was just a thing that was sort of included because like, oh shit, we need, we need it for these two characters. And if two characters have it, then maybe it's like a general thing. And it was like, so I think that's one of those things that happens accidentally. Um, but which then eventually becomes a really kind of fun part of the Star Guardians universe is that they all have their own little guardians, like own little guardian familiar creatures. <sighs> anyway. Let's see. Elan, how dark do you consider the Sailor Moon series is? Said in Super Chat. It's darker than you'd think. Well, it sort of depends. Like, I haven't watched the anime in a very, very long time, so I don't remember. But, like, the manga kind of gets a little bit... It gets a little bit dark. Here and there. Like, not not to the point of Ma Madoka Magica, but... But, like, it has a little bit of that angst in it. Um, that you kind of need for, for, like, a young adult story like that. Later, they retcon that Luxus is sleeping in the staff. Yeah, like, they, they've had to retcon the familiars into it. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, let me see. Where's my assets? There they are. Which moves us along um, to Jinx. And, like, Jinx right up here immediately. Uh... I think, like, Jinx is another one of those that's perfect. Because, like, the way that Jinx is designed specifically, the, the part that she plays in the Star Guardian line early on is she is Lux's rival, right? Like, she, she like, Lux is the sort of the upstanding, like, well-meaning, idealistic, like, yes, I shall save everyone with the power of style. Like, like, she's the sort of optimistic, the one who tries to be the leader, who, the one who worries about doing the right thing. She's the protagonist. And then Lux, uh, then the, um... Jinx, rather, blah, 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 blah. Um, Jinx is the rival. She's like the the troublesome character, like the hot blooded. I'm not listening to any of your rules. Like this, the sort of chaotic counterforce to Lux, and that's where a little bit of of cleverness in the character design comes through again. Because if you pay attention to Lux, like we said, she's such a just a reference to all kinds of magical girl anime kind of thing with the sailor uniform thing that she's got going on, whatever. But that also means she has a fairly like a fairly prim and proper outfit, as it were. Which is where, like, um, which is, like, continued in in Janna and Lulu. But then Jinx comes out, like, and does this thing, like, with the, uh, like, with the hot pants and, like, the boots. <laughs> and, like, the, the, uh, what the hell would you call that? The vest that sort of opens up. Like, so she's not, not only, like, she's showing more skin. With, not in a sexualized way, but she's just showing more skin. And she has, like, a fashion that's just a little bit more chaotic. A little bit more sort of punky. Not really punk, but a little bit, little tiny bit more punky. A little bit more sort of tomboyish in some ways also. Um, that sort of sets her apart from the sort of, the, the sort of well put together hyper femininity that that's attached to Lux. And that, like, character design-wise, it makes her a really good co counterpart. Um, like, they're rivals. They have, they have like, a, an instant dynamic just through their character design. And the way that it works, just in terms of their personalities, the way that they are sort of standardly created, like, Lux and Jinx are perfect rivals. Like, if they were, like, friends in a high school or whatever, like, yes, 
instant sort of anime rivalry relationship between the two of them. Obviously, they would clash. Obviously, they would like rub up against each other um, in terms of their personalities. So like, I think I think Jinx is an, is an absolutely perfect um, Star Guardian character design. And I do love that they turned her gun, like that her guns are the mascots that turn into the guns. That's a, that's a clever, a, adorable little thing. So yeah, like Jinx, right up there. I, I, I adore uh, the way that Jinx is put together. <sighs> okay, let's see. Oh, there's more, some more stupid chats. Hang on. Uh, happy birthday from Austria. First time catching the stream. After the SG Jinx figure that recently went up, my love for SG has been reignited. So this stream is super exciting. Also, Light Cannon is real. Yes, Light Cannon is definitely real. Um, Happy birthday to my favorite. Thank you very much. Shaol uh, Antoine Gouli. I think that's how you pronounce that. JGR Juno, stop talking about this boring skins and tell me more about your tea. Uh, it's chamomile tea with honey. Mostly because that's that's like good for soothing your voice, your vocal cords, and keeps my voice from giving out when I'm talking for like four hours at a stretch or whatever. How, how, however, however long this is gonna take. <sighs> Am I gonna roast Kaisa this time at L O R? Oh no, uh, the the L O R stream. Uh, eventually, I'll review the cards for it. It's like I have a lot of things that have sort of backed up and a lot of projects and a lot of deadlines that I kind of need to get out of the way before I can get back to digging through my, my backlog. So it'll be a while. Um, right, Poppy, Poppy time. Now Poppy is in the great tier. Like I really like her. Um, I think she's again, like one of those, like in terms of like, there's a lot of thought put into the group dynamic of the first Star Guardian line in that they have like these very distinct personalities like that, that, that balance each other out really, really well. Like Poppy, is the sort of serious minded, like, like, like Marshall, like sort of like the first one to sort of grab a hammer and smack a monster in the head, no matter what the situation is. Upstanding thinks of herself as the one who's always doing the right thing, kind of that vibe. Um, and like that works for her, like that works with uh, like her base animation that works with where she is as a character. I like that she's the only one of the Star Guardians so far that has armor, right? Like that she's the only one who has like a breastplate and like considers herself much more of a warrior. Where's Gwen? I believe I have her there. There's Gwen, right there. Don't you worry about that. I've got Gwen, I've got Oriana, I have got Senna, I've got Redeemed, Zaya and Rakan. I've got them all, I think, right? Yeah, they're there. Where is not Redeemed? There they are, good. Yes, I have everything, I have everything. I'm, I've double checked it, I have them, I have them all. Um. <laughs> they are there. But I guess someone, as as a card in chat point, points out, Poppy is the big guy of Lux's team. Like, she's the wharf, right? Like, she's the wharf of the team. Um, and, like, she fits that role nicely. I don't think it's, like, a, a, a revelation in the same way that, like, like Lux and Jinx are. But it's a, it's a good Star Guardian skin. Like, it works. It works really fine and nicely in the, in the dynamic of the team. And, like, yes, that, that works really well. And so that's season one of Star Guardians, right? Like it's it's we we now have our basic concept which is that Lux is the leader of the team who sort of has to learn to pull these like very disparate personalities together and like build a team and protect Valorant City and the looming threat somewhere deep in the background of the dark secret at the heart of the Star Guardian universe which they will sort of keep sort of They'll, they'll sort of keep returning to that as, as like a threat in the background and, and never really quite explore what it is until Zaya and Rakan, basically. Oh, thank you for that super chat, Fernando Mota. Very kind of you. Um, let's see. Which moves us on to season two. And season two is like, that was sort of the first point where I got a little bit disappointed by the Star Guardians. Not because of anything to do with the skins, but because it sort of clarified the way that Riot was going to run this skin line going forward. Which is to say that as far as Riot is concerned, Star Guardians are a skin line and nothing else really matters to it. And that's something like we can really sort of observe very strongly over the course of the years is that 
Riot cares about the Star Guardians to the extent that it can sell skins. They're not that interested. And I mean the company, not the um, not the not the actual staff, the people who work on it, but the company doesn't really care about telling the Star Guardian story. It doesn't really care about the lore or the universe. It doesn't really care about any of that. It cares about using them to sell skins, which like business, business, whatever. Like that's I guess it's to be expected, but one of the consequences of that is that we never, ever, ever get any real story fleshing out the gaps between the seasons, right? Like, so we have season one, Lux has found her team, she needs to get together with Jinx and like, they need to overcome their differences and work together in order to protect Valorant City. And then with all of that setup done, we just kind of fuck off. And then once we come back, all of a sudden, ah, a new team of five Star Guardians have arrived and they have dark secrets and all. Oh, like, they just sort of show up like, out of nowhere, um, with no setup, like without without really interacting with anything that was sort of going on thematically in the idea of season one, um, and like it's 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 very sort of like it's just like oh we need to give Ari is popular, give her a skin, uh, Misfortune is popular skin, uh, put his prop skins on the cell skin, like that's very much the vibe, and the storytellers, like the actual writers and artists at Riot, are doing the best that they can. Like, they've been given an order. We need five new Star Guardian skins. Make it happen. And then they are doing the best that they can with that order to, okay, so there's five new Guardians. So let's say it's season two and sort of the new con. Like, let's just imagine that Lux and Jinx have settled their differences and their team now and they're doing stuff. And then having beaten, I guess, their first big supervillain or something in the climax of season one. Now, the conflict in season two is that Ari's team shows up and Ari is an older and more experienced and more confident Star Guardian. And she's like leading this team of her own who are like all very well put together and they're like sort of more confident and effective than Lux's team are. And then Lux has to deal with like feelings of inferiority. She has to deal with like, like sort of the, the insecurity that comes with that. And Ari, for her part, again, her backstory teases the darker parts of the Star Guardian universe in that Ari is the one who has lost some people, like she has some darkness in, in her past that she's trying to deal with, that she's working out with her team, that like they have their own secret stuff. So like in terms of being the setup for a season two of an anime that we never got to see is like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Like that makes sense as the plot hook for season two. It's just, I really... I was in, in, in the situation where I'm like, but I really wanted to see what would happen, like what season one was actually like. I was hoping that you'd put out some stories or some comics or like like license it out to a manga artist to make a story. Like I was hoping you'd do something with the start, but okay, I guess we're just jumping the storyline forward like a year and a half and on we go. Um, and so that comes across in Ari's character design as well. Like the whole point of Ari is that she's supposed to be a counterpart to Lux in, in, in the same way that Jinx is a counterpart to Lux, Ari also is a counterpart to Lux, but rather than being sort of the chaotic rival character, like the chaotic rival, she is the unrequited rival. Like she's this perfect, glamorous, like in control, older, beautiful, like seemingly untouchable Star Guardian who's got it all figured out, who's got everything under control, who knows exactly what she's doing, that Lux can feel insecure about not measuring up to, right? And that, I do think that comes across in Ari's character design. Like that's a good way to use the fact that Ari intrinsically is just an older looking character than Lux, right? Like she's, she looks way older than Lux. Uh, she looks much more adult. She looks more mature. She has a more of a sexual edge to her just in terms of like the way that she's put together, like being the sort of seductive Kitsuna character, like that stuff is all kind of there. And so it works really well as that kind of a contrast. So Ari for me is not quite in the perfect tier because like, it, I just, she also feels very stand. Like it's kind of part of the point, right? Like Ari is supposed to be the perfect star guardian, like from Lux's perspective, the perfect star guardian. So she has a relatively conservative character design in terms. Like it's not doing very many interesting things. It's just doing, this is what the perfect star guardian looks like. And it sort of eschews any opportunities to do more interesting things around specifically Ari's character design. Um, so like, yes, it's a, it's a great character design, but it's not like, it's not like, whoa, shit, that's perfect. That's the perfect fit for the character kind of blows me away sort of thing. So that, that goes in the great tier. And I, oh God, super chats. Um, hang on. Uh, 
Oh, uh, Zora Majora. Happy birthday. You should check out the Sailor Moon remake SM Crystal. Could be fun to analyze how they updated the art style after 22 years. Wasn't the Sailor Moon Crystal thing kind of crappy upon release and then they had to like go back and make it way better for the Blu-ray release? Something like that? But yeah, I mean, I, I, I took a look at a lot of the screenshots when that came out, and that was kind of interesting. But yeah, maybe I'll do that someday on my own time. F. Petrosa, I love your work. Also quite enjoyed the Star Guardians event, despite the fact that I wasn't great at it and people were rude at me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like I said, I never want to encourage people to play League of Legends, but thank you for the super chat. Um, is that why you think there's no official anime yet, The Dark Prince? You mean in terms of, yeah, like Riot doesn't consider Star Guardians anything other than a skin line. Um... Star Guardians is a, is a skin line to Riot. It's not anything else. They're not willing to to put the money into developing any other media. I think maybe, maybe with the, the with the success of Arcane, maybe, like maybe that will shift something internally. Maybe Riot will be more willing to sort of go to Netflix and say, "Hey, give give us a big budget and give us the Castlevania Animation Studio, and we'll make like ha, let's make like a, a six se uh, episode Star Guardian season or whatever." Like maybe. Um, I wouldn't hold my breath, but that's the sort of that's the sort of door that start that Arcane has opened at Riot. So like I'm curious to see how far they'll go with that. Um Stupid Steroid says, Happy birthday, thank you for sharing. Well, thank you for the super chat. That's very kind of you. A Florian hug, happy birthday, thank you very much. Have you seen the prices for the Star Guardian jewelry? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like Riot knows. Riot knows how much money they can um how much money they can wring out of it. Uh, they do. Like, th that's that's the thing they realized with, like, the latest Star Guardian event. They really pushed hard on pushing it as a prestige event for the game. And that involves also releasing overpriced merchandise um, for the thing, which, yeah. Right. Oh, here comes one. Ezreal. Star Guardian Ezreal. Yeah, I mean, Estriel, I'm sorry, but, uh, no, 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 like, this, this very, this disappointed me a lot, um, when it came out, because this is so fucking boring, this is so, Star Guardian Ezreal, and what, you put him in, like, a shitty tux? Really? That's that's all you do? Star Guardian Ezreal, and he's got, like, dress pants and a jacket? Really? That's that's all you do with the fashion for Star Guardian Ezreal? Like, this is... This is... the uh, No. This, like, this, is, this feels cowardly to me. Like, if someone in chat says, give him a skirt, yeah! Like, do something. Like, like not necessarily, like, uh, like a, a frilly tutu or whatever, but, like... Like the amount of fashion that you could draw from, like you draw from Regency fashion, you could draw from Renaissance fashion, you could draw from like modern sort of like high high concept, like uh, high fashion, uh, haute couture and stuff. Like there's so many things you could draw from that have all these interesting expressions of like masculine, fem like, like mix and match and masculine and feminine influences in terms of fashion. There's all these interesting things you can draw from, but all he gets is like a fucking tux. Oh, not even tux, it's like, what the fuck is like a waistcoat with like a crop top jacket over top? Like, no, this is boring. This is so boring. Like, this is so baby's first anime boyfriend. Like, like, tuxedo mask is way cooler than he is. Right? Like, and he was a he was a really simple design in, in, in fucking Sailor Moon. You can do something way more interesting. With like like mixing and matching like the high femme aesthetics of Star Guardians with like a masculine expression, like putting them into like this sort of twinky outfit. You could do more things than this. This is boring. This is way too conservative. This is this feels cowardly. This feels like Riot being scared to actually sort of give Ezreal the Star Guardian aesthetic because that would be too gay. Oh no, that's oh that's too gender non-conforming. Like no, fuck off. Like <clears throat> this is not good enough. This is not good enough. This is boring. This this is just debonair Ezreal. Like that's all. It's just debonair Ezreal. It doesn't look nearly enough like Star Guardian, right? Because like, this is Star Guardian. Like all of these, like, like the like the frills, the skirts, like the flowing parts of the thing, like the sort of strategic re revelations of. 
the body, the, the layering, like there's so much, like there's so much frill, there's so much decorativism, there's so much like overflow of details, and then you get to Ezra, it's just, pfft. It's so flat, it's so nothing, no, it, cowardly, cowardly. Not good enough, Riot, not good enough. So he's the first one who goes in the bad tier. Um, <laughs> so I, 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 I can't with Ezreal, like this is just like, no, boring, boring, can't have it. Uh, anyway. The male characters of Starcraft didn't just feel uninspired and stuff compared to Orianna and Phil Six. Well, we'll talk about Echo when we get there. The hair is also bad. Yeah, it's not that interesting. Uh, it's just like a sort of half Cloud Strife haircut kind of thing. Which again, like, you have all of anime hair to pull from and that's that's the best you can do. Um, Starcraft and Estrel needs a kilt is what you're saying. Yeah, like, that would be interesting. Like, that would be more interesting. Genuinely prefer if they release skins as lore-less cosmetics rather than tease narrative hooks that can never be followed up on all or nothing. I, I, yeah, I half agree with you, Jay. Um, I half agree with you. Like, theoretically, if they did this right, like, if Riot did this shit right, releasing these, like, narrative hooks that aren't followed up on should be the impetus for people to create fan fiction, fan art, like, make their own stuff and sort of expand on the vagueness that Riot leaves behind. Riot, unfortunately, are not good at that. They have never really, they've never been good at that. Um, and so that doesn't happen, but, you know, it's, it's theoretically that's what should happen. And it could happen if they, like, if they put more effort into it. Anyway, Misfortune. She's one of the ones that sort of, for me, teeters between, like, being fine and needing work. And specifically the reason why is that Misfortune, to me looks way too much like Ari. Like, in terms of the fashion design for the two of them. And that comes down partly to the fact that their color uh, temperatures, like, their colors are fairly close. Like, they're sort of red and pink. Um, and it comes down partly to the fact that they just have really similar outfits. Um, like, the main difference is Misfortune has cleavage, right? Um, and I really, like... Again, that was sort of a little bit of a disappointment thing. Is like, eh, like, could you not have done something more interesting in terms of, like... Mis like, give, Misfortune has, like, in, in the real League of Legends universe, right? Misfortune is a pirate, so look what she's got on one of her little things here. Like, it has an eye patch. Hey, that's fun. Uh, like, a little bit of a sort of subtle nod. And I'm just thinking, like, okay, so why not bring in a little bit of that? Like, uh, like Star Guardians, right? Like, with Lux was already based on Sailor Moon, right? Like, who has this sort of sailor uniform thing going on. So, hey, why not bring in a little bit more of that? Like, Misfortune, make her a little bit more connected to maritime fashion and stuff. Like, there, there's stuff you could do that would set her str more strongly apart from characters like Janna and Arya. And Misfortune, to me, is just kind of like... Yeah, like, it's fine. It's fine. There's, there's nothing really wrong with it. It's just, in the context of all the other designs, it's like... Yeah, it's like I don't I don't feel any reason to be excited about this one, right? Like I can see a reason to be excited about Ari, but I can't see much of a reason to be excited about Misfortune, especially given um, the role that she plays internally in the new group of Star Guardians. Is she's supposed to be the Jinx to Ari, like, right? Like she she is she is to to Ari as Jinx is to Lux, right? She's the one who's sort of more chaotic, who's sort of more violent. In, in her approach, who, like, sort of has more... who challenges Ari's authority over the team. That's sort of where Misfortune is supposed to be at. Along with some other things, uh, like, she's also traumatized more um, by the things that happened to her and Ari, but... But, like, and again, I'm missing that contrast. Like, there just isn't that contrast between these two character designs in the same way. Um, so, like, yeah, uh, like... She should have had shorts or a ripped skirt instead. Yeah, something. Like, something. Just something that would set her more apart and make her more the sort of more violent, more aggressive counterpart to Ari's level-headedness, right? Um, and I'm just kind of not seeing this. Like, honestly, she's in the neat work category. I, I sort of talked myself into it because, like, you, you could have done more to make this interesting. Like, to make this more unique and more special. Um... Which, which un unfortunately they didn't do. Uh, oh god, more super chats. Um, Star Guardian was ruined when Urgot didn't become a part of the roster. Yeah, we'll talk about Urgot when we get there, Duality Knight, but thank you for that super chat. Absolutely, we will. Uh, they should have given Ezreal JoJo inspired skins, Lablas says. Yes, like fucking JoJo. Like, bring that one. Like, that's another huge anime that has, like, sort of, like, that has sort of a pull 
And I think you could justify making Ezreal a bit of a JoJo reference, like bringing in a little bit of that Araki fashion would have been, like that drip, that would have been fantastic. Um, but, you know, that's as it is. Vulture, you know, as terrible as they are, gacha games have this all figured out with interesting stories and lore that's actually followed up on with the skins and alternate forms. It's wild to me that Riot can't do it. Some of them do, Vulture. I think some gacha games, like Genshin Impact, for example, does a really good job of telling stories, like of, of getting people invested in its characters. The other ones, eh, maybe not so, like, maybe, maybe not so much. Um, like, there, there's some gacha games that really don't try very hard. Dislight, for example. Like, a lot of people sort of got hyped for Dislight, and, like, I tried it, and it's like, there's nothing there. <laughs> like, it, it's 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 a game that exists on its, its aesthetic only, and there's fuck all else to it. At least as far as I could tell with the hours that I spent on it. Uh, Ruben Sönerquist Gunquist, uh, Sönerstrup Gunquist, Tak for den super chat. That's very kind of you. Black Fox Draco, the challenger to the main character is called the Lancer, by the way. Yeah, that's on TV tropes. It's called the Lancer. Um, or the Dragon, sort of depending on what kind of thing, what kind of relationship it is. Happy birthday, Leo Pride Baby. Well, I, I, I try not to care too much about my star sign, but thank you very much, Travis Wilcox. So. That's the Pajama Guardians. That's not what I need. Moving on to Soraka. Now, Soraka is, like, such a natural fit for Star Guardians, right? Um, like, like it, it, when you think about it, like, it's hard to imagine any character in League of Legends who's, like, more of a natural fit for Star Guardians than the Star Child. Like, it's our whole thing already is that she's connected to the stars. So, like, obviously. And Soraka, I think, is, like, okay. Again, I'm sort of, like, the, the main big thing about her is the, like, she has the butt wings, uh, the wings coming out of her ass. I know it's her lower back, leave me alone. Um, but again, it's, it's the thing of, like, where she's supposed to be sort of the, the soft-spoken sort of, um, I think we should do this, like, the sort of soft-spoken healer of the group, like, the one who, like, never speaks up, never shouts, never gets angry, but who's nonetheless, like, deeply determined and determined to protect the team, right? Um... And again, I feel like the fashion here, like the character design of, of the outfit and what she's wearing just doesn't quite support it enough. Um, like, I kind of like the idea that they have going on, like where they have like the big sort of the white sheet over top of her chest, like sort of protecting her a little bit, like giving her a little bit of that, like, um, like shutting her away a little bit. I feel like maybe like a longer dress, um, like maybe, uh, what are they called? Like streamers, um, like, like, like something that sort of hangs down a little bit for like that, that sort of brings in a little bit more of that sort of shut away aesthetic, uh, like a little more of that plain girl vibe, right? Like something there that, that would set her fashion a little bit more apart from the other ones. It's like something's just kind of missing. I do love though. I do love that her familiar is like this classic thing of like, she's a cinnamon, sweet little cinnamon roll who wouldn't hurt a fly. And then this guy is like the guy who's like, what the fuck did you just say to me, you little bitch? Like he's the one who'll, who'll post the, uh, the, um, the Navy SEAL copy pasta, but mean it. <laughs> um, like I like that dynamic. That's fun. But like there's, there's something more could have been done with her outfit and her fashion rather than just relying on the wings. Um, to be her thing, as it were. Um, where I feel like, yeah, they could have they could have gone a little bit harder on it. Um, so it's like she's okay. Like she's not a bad character design at all. Like she works. Like she's a perfect fit for a character for a Star Guardian. It's just she doesn't really rise to to the heights of 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 like being sort of like, oh fuck shit that yeah that's so cool. And that's partly also just because Soraka's base design is so fucking boring. Um, like Soraka's base design is already. Like, it's so nothing. Um, so like, yeah, obviously. The skin they put on her isn't going to be that interesting either. But, you know, that's where you are. Uh, oh, good lord. Uh, there's some more super chats I missed. See you. Zoe's Media Hut says, happy birthday. My birthday's tomorrow too. Happy birthday to us. Thank you very much. Uh, the DJ Dragonflame. That's another thing. They aren't really creative when it comes to group dynamics either. Like mirroring season one to season two is interesting. Doing again in season three is lazy. We'll we'll talk about that, but um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not so hung up on them not being creative with group dynamics as such, uh, because like Star Guardians isn't really supposed to be creative. It's it's very much supposed to follow the tropes. Um, I where I think they maybe could follow some different tropes at some point or another, um, but 
but no, like Star Guardians following the tropes, that's fine by me. That that's completely fine. Uh, Henry XL double I. A TV kind of life ring is exactly what I need in the background to clean my house today. It's always a joy to listen to you. Happy birthday. Well, thank you very much for the super chat. And thank you, Ginger the Fluff the Wolf, uh, for that super chat as well. You didn't say anything, but thank you for the tip then, I guess. Anyway, the prestige version of Soraka, um, I kind of think it's better. Uh, like, the prestige version of Soraka, because it does a little bit more with the fashion, um, because it does a little, like, it gives her, like, the, like, the, the bow on the back, and, like, it, it, upgrades her staff so that it's more elaborate. Like, it does a little bit more with her. I think it's better. I don't think it's necessarily what I'm looking for from her. Like, I don't think it's necessarily doing more to express her character, but at least it's, like, it's champagne pink. It's a classic, typical prestige skin, and if it, if if all the other prestige skins didn't look exactly the fucking same, um, you know, uh, that would be fine. But, like, this does something a little bit more elaborate with her, turns her into a little bit more of a princess character, in a sense, like, it gives her a little bit more of that princess vibe. And I wouldn't mind if Soraka was, like, Soraka Hime, you know, um, in terms of the group dynamic of, like, she's, she's the sort of... Like, she's the princess character of the group. Um, like, that would have been interesting. Of course, prestige skins don't mean anything. They have no actual connection with the, with the story or the character. I just... It's just, this is a ranking all of the Star Guardian skins, and that includes the Prestige skin, so the Prestige skin is also okay. Uh, it just goes there. <laughs> okay, let me pour another cup of tea. Someone in chat asked if I'm British. You having a laugh, mate? Of course I'm fucking not listening to me. I can't do a British... I can do a British accent, kind of. Like a sort of... Like a sort of... A, oh, yes, well, terribly sorry. Uh, 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 I, sh I shall have a little tea break. Uh, pardon me for a second. Like, I can do that kind of British, but I can't do an actual, you know... I can't sound like an actual English person, for example. <laughs> Oh, Boris Johnson? I, I kind of... Uh, well, I mean, obviously, I'm in the House of Commons. <laughs> well, absolutely. Like, that's Boris Johnson. He, he doesn't know how to frame a fucking word out of his mouth. He's a blithering buffoon. Um... <laughs> mm. Please stop, you're hurting me. Oh! <laughs> but I'm very sorry. I shall, I shall talk in a very different accent now, yeah. Uh, it's, it's a camp German accent, yeah. <laughs> Or maybe I should just use my uh, natural accent, my Danish accent, and talk in that one instead. Uh, I could, I could certainly do that. I mean, this, this right now is hurting anyone who is actually Danish and who's listening to this, uh, because we don't like to listen to our actual Danish accents. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's very painful to us. Uh, so doing this is like, like inflicting torment uh, on my, on my country, uh, my fellow countrymen, and it's, it's genuinely. It's very funny for me. <laughs> uh, anyway, back to my fake American accent. Jesus Christ, that tea is hot. Fucking hell. Ah. Ow, my tongue. <laughs> okay. Where were we? Syndra. So, Syndra is again, like, building out the group dynamic of Ari's team. Um, and it, it, like, this is the one that does something a little bit different. Like, she's essentially sort of the Janna of Ari's group, right? Like, she's, she's the sort of, like, the slightly, she's purple, first of all, and she's the sort of slightly mysterious line who has, like, some kind of secret that she's not letting out in the same way that Janna does. But where Janna is not telling her secrets in order to protect her team, with Syndra, you sort of get the sense that she's scheming something, right? Like, 
like even her character model has like a smug anime girl smile on her face. But like you look at this one, it's like, oh no, yeah, like with the eye patch over one eye and like the hair concealing her face and like the the sort of dark vibes and the crown on her head, like sort of a little bit a little bit of that sort of uh, empress vibe coming off it. Like like okay, she's probably maybe maybe there's some evil going on here with a little devil orbs that she's got floating. Like maybe there's some kind of something going on in there. Um, so you get the sense that, like, Syndra might be someone who, who would turn evil, right? Or maybe she's someone who seems like she would turn evil, but who's actually helping the good guys out all along, something like that. Um, like, either or, but she's very well designed to fit that character. Uh, like, I, I really quite like um, Star Guardian Syndra. She's, she's extremely well designed to fit that character archetype. And, like, it's it works so naturally with her powers, right? Like, it works so naturally... Um, with, like, the way that she summons orbs and throws them out. Like, that's already such a fucking anime power. So she's, like, classical, as, as Yin says in chat, classical dark magical girl. Absolutely. And so, like, I, I really like that. I, I like um, Syndra a lot. I like the darkness that she brings. She, she has a contrast um, with, like, you remember how I talked about Ari and Misfortune just don't have enough contrast between each other in terms of, like, communicating their character design? Um, Prestige Sin SG Syndra, by the way, that's gonna be near the end because she's a C's, she's I, I put her with the new Star Guardian skins. Um, like, Syndra has some fashion that actually sort of expresses, like, she has all these spikes and all these edges all over her character, like, these little accents and things that hang off of her, like, the, the diamond shape that recurs over and over again in her motif. Like, she has a shape language that belongs to her, a symbol that sort of denotes her as a character, which is something that, like, Soraka and... Uh, and misfortune really kind of lack. They don't have that that symbology in like incorporated into their character designs nearly as well. Uh, that like that's a sort of recognizable visual iconography that Syndra has in her characters. And like I think I think she just way better designed in in terms in in terms of those things. Uh, which leads us on to the pajama guardian. I should uh, did I put Syndra on the list? Yes, I did. The Pajama Guardians. So this is canonical. Like, this is part of the lore, is that Lux, in order to try and, like, foster cooper cooperation between the teams and sort of bring people together and, and get everybody in line, she throws a slumber party and everyone shows up and they sort of have fun and they have some discussions. She has, like, a dark conversation with misfortune at some point i think um but like it's sort of like it's it's a team building thing where they sort of all get together and have a good time and sort of like get to know each other kind of vibe and it's it's adorable it's all very cute um it's all like it's it's all extremely twee in a in a good way i think and i think it's very very cute it's also i just i it's just my brain because of the way that I am as a person. I just can't help but question why would their pajamas look like their Star Guardian uniform? Like why why do their pajama why are their pajamas Star Guardian? Th why why would their pajamas like they're trying to hide this from their parents? Like why would their pajamas be Star Guardian? Like and that's that doesn't matter. That's missing the point. It doesn't fucking matter, but I can't help but think about it. Uh, anyway, that's fine. They're fine. They're fine. Like I, I don't have any problem with them. It's just it's one of those things of like why don't they have normal pajamas? And that's, if I were to do a character design critique, right? Um, this is where I would say, uh, like, the pajamas could be used to express their characters more, rather than just be sort of these relatively uniform onesies that they're all wearing kind of thing. But again, missing the point, it doesn't fucking matter. Um, like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um... They're fine. They're fine. Oh, good lord. More super chats. Uh, do you think Yumi would be a good Star Guardian skin? Mm, no. I, I don't think so. Not a good Star Guardian skin, no. I think if Yumi were to be made a Star Guardian skin, I would have her be like... She could be a Star Guardian mascot, a Star Guardian familiar, right? Like Nora, her owner, was a Star Guardian, and Yumi got separated from her, and now she has to go and find it. She could be a... a a Star Guardian mascot, she could not be a Star Guardian, I think. Um, like, that could work. Uh, Louis the Le Tyro, uh, happy birthday, Mrs. Kang. So glad you're gifting us. You're gifting me, frankly, uh, with all these super chats and, and your presence. Thank you for spending your time with me. There's like three fucking thousand of you here, which. Do you know how weird that is? Do you have any fucking idea how weird it is that I'm sitting here talking about some skins in a, in a video game and 3,000 people? 
have bothered to spend their time on this. Uh, it's a weird experience. It's strange. I try not to think about it. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming along. Um, I, I feel very privileged, but it's also... Have you ever tried to talk in front of 3,000 people? Have you ever tried to do that? It's nerve-wracking. I need the fucking tea, man. Ah, no. Ah, fuck. It's still too hot. Shit. Ow. Jesus. Ah. Uh, ow. <laughs> and cold water now. Ah, there we go. Um... Anyway, uh, um, Logan B sent a super chat saying, Happy birthday. I didn't realize we had the same birthday. I turned 22 today. Well, happy birthday to you. And thank you for the super chat. Um, is it canon that Lulu made her PJ? It is canon Lulu made her PJs herself. Yes, absolutely. And then, oh my God, Wired. That is a, that is an exceptionally generous super chat. That That's very, very kind of you. Uh, please don't... Please don't spend any money on me that you need for yourselves, by the way. Like, don't, I know it's my birthday, but like, whatever, I'm fine. Don't, don't worry about it. You don't have to spend a cent, a dollar, or a dime to be here or to hang out. Like, absolutely not. Thank you very much. That's, that's really, really kind of you. Um, and hope you stick around a good while and take care of you. I'm trying. I'm trying. But thank you very much for that, Wired. That's very kind of you. Um, speak Danish. Uh, I'm not... Yeah, twig. That's it. That's the first thing that fucked another silly semi here. Can still dance cool. So, I I'll speak Danish a little bit there. There you go. Um, and uh, Genesis Trust, thank you for that super chat. Star Guardian Yumi could be similar to Artemis Luna. Also happy birthday. Thank you, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Right. That leads us on to the next season, um, but I'm just gonna make sure that my voice doesn't burn out. So I'm gonna take a little break and I'm going to play an ad. I think this button does that, so just a sec. Okay, either that plays an ad or it doesn't, I'm not sure how it works, but I put I put a thing in. So well anyway, um I'm I'm gonna go have a break for like a few minutes. Probably I don't know how it works. Um <laughs> uh, and I'll be back in, in just a bit and we'll talk more Star Guardians.
Okay. Let's see. I need to get the music down to the right level again. There we go. Got some tea. Ugh. Doing some stretches. Ready to keep go. There's more super chats. Uh, happy birthday, Scan. Thank you very much, Albert Lynn. Um, falling headphones. Never been ha so happy to be sick. Oh, get better soon. I hope it's nothing serious. If it wasn't, I'd be at work and miss the stream live. Happy, happy birthday. Enjoy your break. Thank you. And Axel Kenry, thank you for that super chat for some tea. Thank you very much. And Tic Tac coming in hot with a super chat there. Uh, this is more for when you get to Urgot, but imagine if they made him a little nerdy guy in a Star Guardian mech instead of what we got. Yeah, we'll talk about Urgot. We will talk about Urgot when we get when we get to him. Because uh, <laughs> if you follow my shorts channel, you might know that I have some strong opinions on the matter of the Spider Boy. But um, this moves us on to Star Guardian Nico, the strong tomato. Um, and Nico is one of those like I'm not a hundred percent sure how I feel about her. Because, like, on the one hand, she's definitely one of the most interesting Star Guardian skins. Just because she has a tail. Um, and because of the things that they do with, like, the fact that she has, like, the shape-shifting skin. And, like, the green scales and stuff. The way that that moves. She definitely has the most interesting physicality. She definitely has one of the most interesting character designs of all the Star Guardians. On this, At the same time, something about it just doesn't click for me. It's something I don't know what it is. Like for some reason, when I look at Stargard and Nico, I'm kind of like, it doesn't, it doesn't click. Like something doesn't click for me, and I, I've, I've had a lot of trouble articulating what it is exactly. Like I, I really genuinely don't know what it is that isn't clicking for me. Um, because I think she's genuinely one of the most interesting Star Guardian character designs. It's just interesting doesn't always mean natural or fitting or good. It's just interesting. Um, someone in chat says it might be the eyes. Yeah, like it, it, maybe it's that there is that inhumanity to her that's sort of that's maybe not integrated quite correctly into the character. I don't know. Like this is one of those I've struggled with trying to figure out how the hell I feel about it. Um, because I look at it and I go, well, th I should like this. I really should because like because this is interesting. Like, there's there's some good stuff going on here. I just I just kind of can't get with it. So I I have to put it in the okay tier because I feel both ways. Like, if I were to make an argument for why it doesn't work, it's that it doesn't in like it doesn't integrate the inhumanity into her properly. Like, it doesn't really use the fact that she has the shape shifting powers and that she's technically a lizard person. Like, it's not really used in terms of presenting her character. It's just, like, accessories that happen to hang on to her. But on the other hand, that's fine, because she's a, she's a magical girl. Like, that's kind of fine. But I keep thinking of, um... What the hell is it called? The magical girl thing where it's, like... Where they get powers from animals that they use to fight eat strawberry or something? I can't remember. Like, I, I keep thinking of other ways in which animal-based powers could be integrated into something like a magical girl character design, and I keep... Um... Tokyo Mew Mew, yeah. I keep thinking of, like, surely something could have been done with that and, like, her lizard thing. Like, to do something, like, to sort of integrate the fact that she has lizard powers better. Thing, I say. Like, but again, like I said, I feel both ways about it. I think... I think it's probably fun. Animorphs! <laughs> yeah, Connie. Animorphs, that's what I was thinking about. <laughs> And same story with the prestige skin. Like, again, this is just a prestige skin. It's just gold and, like, it's champagne, pink, and gold. Um, it, I, I like the hairdo in the in the prestige skin a little bit better. Like, I like that it's all curled up and a little bit more sort of done up. Um, but it's also, wow, wow, it's a lot of gold. That's very shiny. So, yeah, like, prestige skins generally go in the same tier as the, as the base design, because, yeah... Uh, we, we're building a perfect bell curve here. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so not much to say about that. Then we get to Saya and Rakan, Dark Star Guardians. And, um... Perfect, 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 perfect. Absolutely perfect from top to bottom. Every part of it. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. 
Yes. Yes. This is good. This is th is this is so right. We'll talk about the redeemed skins a little bit later, but Saya and Rakan as like the team rocket to the Star Guardians as like these two like arrogant sort of annoying slightly more adult um sort of like 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 sort of snide scheming like mean girl star dark star guardians like who haunt the team and fuck around like yes yes that's perfect that's just exactly right because Zaya and Rakan like part of their story already like part of the way that they're put together is they're supposed to be a little annoying like the fact that they're so fucking into each other all the fucking time it's supposed to be a little much it's supposed to be a little bit annoying they're supposed to be a little bit like oh Jesus fucking Christ like get your hands off of each other for two seconds you horny fucking honeymooners they're supposed to be that a little bit, right? And then using that with the Star Guardian line to make them like the dark, evil Star Guardians who are like, no, Star Guardians, more like Star Losers, <laughs> Like, to make them that? Fuck yes. Like, 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 they are the Team Rocket to the Star Guardians, and it's perfect. Like, yes, I love them. They are absolutely fantastic. And this comes through also in the way that their fashion and their colors are designed. Because the, the Dark Star Guardians, obviously, use much darker colors in their character designs. And that's complemented really well with, first of all, with Zaya's deep purple. Uh, sort of like purple with some, some pinkish accents here and there. And especially with Rakan, who has this like teal and purple thing going on. Like, he mixes in some of Zaya's colors. Um... But like it just it just synergizes so well with that darker color theme that comes through them. Even their little um, familiars have like an evil vibe to them. Like with their little owls, they have the little um, like ear tufts of feathers poking out, which sort of creates the image of devil horns. And it's just like yes, ab absolutely fantastic, 100% perfect, 10 out of 10, no notes. I love this so much. Like this is this is exactly the right thing to do. And also because Zaya and Rakan are noticeably more adult than the general Star Guardians. Like, like they, they are noticeably adults. Uh, they are grown-ups. Which, again, we'll talk about how that becomes a little bit of a problem later on, but as a contrast to the Star Guardians themselves, that makes them perfect because they're older, they ha they, they're they more experienced, they have a little bit more power, they're a little bit more sexualized. Um, like, not, not very explicit, but just like there's a little bit more of that vibe of adultness to them. Right, a little bit more of that edge of adultness to them a bit. Um, so that all just for me, that all just works absolutely perfectly. I love them. They are, they are, they are, they are fantastic. They are the best. Um, just yes, perfect. Like no notes. And Zoe kind of has to go in the same category. Um, oh, hang on, I wasn't supposed to do that. There we go. Because yeah, like if if you're gonna use. Um, Zoe for anything in a Star Guardian line. Like, you either have to make her the extreme... Like, she either has to be a Lulu, right? She has to be a Lulu. She has to be the sort of, like, the sort of quirky weirdo who says all the funny lines and does all, uh, does all the weird shit. Or she has to be a horrifying cosmic evil that corrupts everything. She Like, she has to be evil. She has to be the bad guy. Like, the most, like, this, this thing that looks sort of vaguely cute and adorable, but which is actually horrifying, dark, and evil. Yep. That... That's that. Those are the two things you can do with Zoe, um, in a Star Guardian line. And the fact that they chose to go like she has the eyes that are two different colors and like the like the shine, like, <laughs> and she's so extra. Like she's so like just on the edge of being like a deviant art OC, right? She's so extra. There's so much too much going on with her, um, like that that just has that perfect like just right at the perfect balance of too much but not too much, too much, right? Um, like, I, and I, I really quite adore that. Like, that that works perfectly. And the way that she's presented in the animation around, of course, uh, start, like the, the animated short with Nico, fuck yeah, like, holy shit, that's fantastic. Um, because, like, if you want, and it's like an old horror trope, right? Like, you, if you want something to be scary, make something evil look like a child, right? Evil things that look like a child are scary. Like, they're just sort of inherently kind of scary. Like, it's a trope, and we all kind of, we're all kind of used to it, but still, like, small children are just inherently creepy, and using that to make, like, uh, Zoe a, a, a proper Star Guardian villain. Yep, I'm on board with it. Like, that, that works like gangbusters for me. And there is, and this is something I quite like, there is a little bit of that tension, right? In that she has, 
this very noticeable, like, dark pe uh, purple lipstick on, which sort of, it's very incongruous with the rest of her, because, like, she is so much a fucking child. And then she has this lipstick, which is, like, a sort of very adult thing, and again, it creates that dissonance, that, like, that sense of unease, like, yeah, hang on, that's not, that's not right. Something about that is a little bit subtly wrong. Um... In, in a in a sort of in a way that you can't necessarily put your fingers on but like they, they play with that a lot like sort of I incorporating those aspects into it um Annie is scarier than Tipok yes absolutely like Tipok you know what you're dealing with when you a big raging fire demon coming at you you can deal with that like it's scary it's terrifying you're gonna die but you're still like yeah yeah okay I get it uh wall of flame it hates me because rah rah whatever you you get that Annie it's like she might just hang out with you. She might just come up, Hey, do you want to see my bear tippers? And then you just look at her bear tippers and you go, Oh, that's a really nice teddy bear you've got there. That's a cool... And she goes, Ha, thank you very much. And then she goes away and nothing happens. That could happen. That could happen, right? With Annie. Or she could set you on fire and laugh as you burn to death. You don't know! <laughs> so she's scarier. She's creepier. Um, ugh. Was that all of them for that? Yeah, right. That was because that season of Star Guardians didn't have very much in it, did it? It had Saira Khan and Zoe and Nico. That was about it. Oh, good lord. More super chats. Um... Oh, jeez, I missed a bunch. Uh, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Duality Knight, I think, was the one I missed most recently. In the Urgot range, can you talk about how the meme came to be, please? Yes, I can. MG Weaver, love these streams. Hope you have a happy birthday. Thank you very much for the super chat. Happy birthday. Hope you have a great day. Still sad that Gwen has a Star Guardian skin only for Legends of Terra, not League of Legends. Yeah, well, I mean, that's how it goes. But thank you very much, Kevin Yang. We'll talk about that. Um, Ignacio Ar Arastua, uh, Feliz Compañeros, uh, if there are so many people, there are so many people here because you earn it. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for that super chat. So, Oren, thank you for that super chat and that happy birthday. Uh, Empress, watching this while feeling under the weather as a Quinn main, I'm really happy to see her get a Star Guardian skin, even if she's the millionth pink one. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Um, and thank you for that super chat. Fernando Mota, uh, what would you think of Evelyn for Star Nemesis? We'll talk about that. Uh, I mean, I, th I feel like Nikki has already kind of covered it, um, but yeah. And Windsor, thank you. Very much. Your shorts and hot takes were introduction to you, and they're so unique and intriguing. I tune into anything I can, and I'll keep it up. Well, thank you very much. That's kind of you. And Lunatic Thinker, thank you very much for that super chat as well. These people are sitting on such a great IP, and they don't do much. Sad. Yeah. Welcome to, well, welcome to being a League of Legends fan. <laughs> That's what that is like. T. Right then. Moving on to the most recent season. The absolute fucking torrent of skins <laughs> that they released for the current event that's going on right now. So, to summarize, we started with Lux as a one-off, as a thing that's just, hey, yeah, sure, you can do your magical girl thing, whatever, I guess. Um, from management sort of allowing the team to make, to make a, a magical girl-inspired skin. And then we moved on to, okay, we'll do, like, a team for her, I guess. And she'll get a little animated short, and at least, like, well, yeah, okay, fine. Uh, and then um, we get into, like, season season three, where it's like, okay, okay, all right. Th this has some legs. This has made some money. Um, and that's when Ari and her team show up, right? Like, uh, uh, season two, rather. That's when Ari and her team show up. Season zero is what I would call just Star Guardian Lux alone. Um... Ari and her team show up, we begin to sort of deepen the universe where it's like, oh, there's dark secrets, and oh, the secrets of the first star, like, that becomes more central, and Ari kind of takes over as a main character for the, for the franchise for a bit, in a really weird kind of way, even though, of course, they don't put out nearly enough media to actually have a main character. Then we get into, it's technically season three, but I call it season four, which is Star Guardian Zaya Rakan. Nico and Zoe, where, like, Nico is fighting against Zoe over and over again, way out in the dark reaches of space, like, trying to handle them all alone, because she wants to z save Zaya and Rakan, who've been corrupted. Eventually, Ari shows up and, and, like, manages to save her before Zoe can destroy her, etc., etc. Uh, that stuff happens out in space somewhere, um, with completely disconnected from Lux, completely disconnected from anything that happens on Earth where Lux is theoretically still doing the job of trying to lead the other Star Guardians and protect the world from 
monsters-ish. Which leads us on to the current season with Akali, Echo, Oriana, Gwen, Kaisa, Nila, Quinn, Zion Rakan get redeemed, uh, Rel, Senna, Seraphine, Sona, Talia, and the star nemeses show up, right? We'll talk about Urgot at the very end. Um, where, which is where Riot, like, with this particular event, with this whole thing, Riot have really kind of kicked it into high gear. They've really kind of said, okay, we've had, like, a couple of, of runs at this. Like, we've tried this a couple of times. This is really, really popular. We think we can make a bunch of money from this thing. So let's hit the gas and just go all the way fucking in on this. And that's also... Um, that's also something that should be seen in the context of what happened with their last big event with the Sentinels of Light, right? Like the Sentinels of Light, I think it's fair to say it didn't go over well. <laughs> that that didn't work out so well for them because it was bad. Uh, it was a bad event and they should feel bad about having it. Um, they they kind of fucked the pooch on that one seven ways from Sunday. And so Star Guardians, I think, is in part a bit of a reaction to that. It was a bit of a reaction to just how badly um, Sentinels of Light went, in that they, okay, we're not going to do another actual main canon lore event thing going on, because clearly, unless we get that exactly right, people are going to be mad. Like, how the fuck did you not put Yorick in? Like, how the fuck did you leave out Yorick from Sentinel? How did you do that, right? I don't understand how the fuck you managed to do that shit. Um, but like, they, they, they've stepped away from trying to do any, any kind of main lore event thing now. We're going back to the thing we did with Spirit Blossom, which is we're going to create a mini story within a skin line. And then they're just going to put the gas, like push the gas on that one and just go, okay, all out with this shit. We're going to do 14 million new skins. We're going to do a visual novel. We're going to do like an event in Wild Rift that has its own comics and animated bits. And we're going to do like... Across all of our games, we'll have guns in Valorant. We'll do everything, um, and then we'll and then like we'll see if we can't wring a ton of money out of this shit. Um, and sort of that's I think that's partly why the visual novel is constructed around the same structure as Sentinels of Light, where like you have to play X number of games to unlock the actual story. Um, but they've sort of dialed back a lot on how much you need to grind to unlock, like, the main story of the thing. Um, and generally it's better, like, from, from what I hear from people who actually want to play League of Legends. Uh, like, the Star Guardians event is better, easier to get through, easier to play through. Um, easier to deal with than Sentinels of Light was, less frustrating to engage with. Um... So, like, it, it, it sort of feels like this is Riot sort of using a popular skin line to sort of try and claw back some goodwill from the community um, by doing a better job <laughs> this time. Like, that's the context you should understand it in. Like, that's why there are so many fucking skins this time is because Riot have sort of picked this as, okay, main lore event thing fucked up and didn't work at all and people got mad at us maybe we can do this if we set it in an alternate universe um yeah the personal stories are a grind fest still yeah they still incorporated the grind you're not getting away from the grind because riot wants that fucking engagement metric but yeah which is why once again i would never encourage anyone to play league of legends ah <laughs> uh. Anyway, oh lord, more super chats. Uh, I'm tr I'm trying to balance actually talking about the thing we're here to talk about with 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 reading super chats. Like, uh, so okay, John Gold. I like when Light of Shadow Nico does the Nico Nico need pose when it shows her old team and such. Yeah, there's lots of references like that in in Star Guardians. Uh, Mizen, hey Sky, can't stay in the stream, but I just want to pop in and say happy birthday. Thank you very much. Nearest twenty five. Speaking of Japan inspired things, do you think a Super Sentai Power Ranger skin line would work? Yeah, it's called Super Galaxy. Um, that, 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 that already exists. EDXN, I love your content so much and it's always calming to listen to you talk about animation and characters on a day some feelings that. Well, I'm glad to help. Thank you for the super chat. And John Gold, Akali's pet is a Belveth reference in the story. Yeah, like it looks a little bit like that. I think you make that argument. Um, which is kind of a pity. I would like Star, Star Nemesis Belveth. Like she seems like a good... Um, she seems like a good match for that. Anyway, Akali. Let's back to the Star Guardians. Actual talk about the Star Guardians. Star Guardian Akali. Again, this is a little bit of a Nico situation. Um, 
where I feel like I should like this more than I do. Like, I feel like I should be more interested in hype uh, for this than I actually am. Um, but it is a thing of like, like again, it's this thing about what are you actually doing with the fashion? Where Akali is a ninja, right? Like they have themed her after a ninja. They've given her the mask. They, she has like uh, the, the the sickle and the knife. She has her shadow powers, but her outfit design, the, like the actual, the actual way that she's designed, I feel like they could have gone a lot harder on mixing ninja and magical girl aesthetics. Like, I believe there is already, like, magical girl anime where they are, like, magical girl ninjas. Like, I'd, I'd be surprised if that doesn't exist. And I feel like, um, I feel like you could have gone harder on mixing and matching the fashion to make that work. I feel like the Star Guardian part of the fashion, like, the magical part of the girl part of the fashion is too powerful here. Like, there's not enough of a mix there. And so Akali sort of I don't think she's bad, it's just, she just doesn't, I just can't get excited for her. Like, I think it needs a little bit more work. I think it needs a little bit more, you know, I, I think it needed a little bit more spark, something more going on to it, um, that would locate her more in that space of like, she's a slightly darker Star Guardian, she's like an assassin Star Guardian. Um, she's someone who's not really optimistic um, and interested. That's the other thing about Akali's story, right? Akali's story is that she's falling, right? She's falling. Uh, she is burning out as a Star Guardian, and she's coming closer and closer and closer and closer to actually falling and becoming corrupted. Like, that's her story. And again, I feel like the fashion and, and like, the design could do more to sort of tell that, like, incorporate more dark and black into her. Like, like bring that ninja aesthetic in more when, like, to really sort of tell the story that she is tarnished, like, she's corrupting s slowly. And it's there, like, they are doing it, it's just, I feel like they could have pushed it way harder uh, than, than they actually did. But that's just me. Like, that's, I just, I just kind of, kind of don't vibe with it completely. Um, yeah, which moves us on to Echo. And I, I don't know if I'm in the minority here, but I, I really like Star Guardian Echo. Like, I, I really kind of like Star Guardian Echo. Like, I think this is, like, a way better version of, of, like, in terms of what they did with Ezreal, right? Like, Ezreal just wore a debonair suit, right? He just wore a debonair suit. That's kind of all that was going on there. And it didn't really express his personality. It really didn't really do anything for him. Then we have Echo, who's, like, who has, like, the sort of, like, the pants here. Like, the, the baggy sort of workman-like pants. Um, he has the little robot as a sidekick, the Tamagotchi thing. Like, there's more effort being put in here to actually reflect Echo's personality in the way that his Star Guardian outfit is designed. Like, I think this works a lot better. I still think they could have pushed it harder. Like, maybe give him a tool belt, right? Like, like actually have him have tools in his belt and, like, little little something-somethings. Like, something that, that, that pushes him a little bit further than that. But, like, the... Just this thing. Like, the coat with, like, the star field on the inside of it miles ahead of fucking Ezreal. Like, like miles ahead of what they did. When something that expresses his personality way more, that makes him way more of an interesting, distinct character as a Star Guardian, rather than just the boy one. Like, like the, the sort of flat, generic boy one. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I quite like um, Star Guardian Echo. And of course, the prestige goes in exactly the same slot, because they're not really canon, and I mean, this is better prestige than the other Star Guardian prestiges. Like, I like that it turns, like, his, like, it sort of incorporates a crystalline thing here and there. It's like, it's nice, it's fine. Uh, I don't care about it that much. It's not interesting to me, but it's like, yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, we're not supposed to do fiddlesticks yet. Oh, I didn't, I didn't number it correctly. Hang on. There we go. Kaisa first. Um, or Oriana? Where the hell is she? Ah, God, my assets are all messed up. Where the hell is Oriana? Hang on, I know I have her splash. <laughs> there she is. Okay, good. Why the hell wasn't that showing up? Thank you. 
Yeah, okay. Um... Uh, my assets were out of order. That annoys me. Anyway, Star Guardian Oriana. Again, natural fit. Like, I, there's an interesting idea going on with Oriana in that she is like a former robot who got turned into a real girl. Like, she's a sort of Pinocchio story. And Oriana already has the sort of ballerina aesthetic. And like, ballerina, ballet, that sort of thing, that's stuff that very naturally synergizes and works with magical girl aesthetics, right? Um... Like that's the, she's a like one of those characters who's such a natural fit for a Star Guardian thing. Like it's just she just sort of sort of belongs there. It it makes perfect sense turning her ball into her familiar, like being talker, um, with the little thing. Yeah, like it it just yeah Princess Tutu exactly Princess Tutu vibes as people are saying. Same face syndrome though. Yeah, I mean those are table stakes unfortunately um, with this stuff. That, 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 that's table stakes with anime-inspired things especially, and with League of Legends in general. Same face syndrome. Uh, but, no, yeah, like, Oriana's just like, I don't know how much to say about her, except like, yeah, no, this makes perfect sense. Um, absolutely perfect sense. Um, I am not sure how much the fact that she's a robot who got turned into a real girl, like, I, I don't know how much that comes from the fact that, like, Oriana's animation is just like, it's weird and uncanny. Actually, let me see if I can, if she's available uh, in the model viewer. Like Oriana's animation is weird and jerky and uncanny and kind of creepy, uh, if we're quite honest. No, can't get that in the model viewer. Okay, fair enough. Um, kind of creepy if, if we're quite honest so like uh yeah she's got unique animation just because of the skin like i'm curious about how much of um of the way that like that oriana in the lore is a robot that got turned into, into a real girl is a reference to her base lore or if it's because that just makes it easier to sort of explain away the way that she's like put together and constructed and animate like the way that she moves um yeah we'll pull the skin spotlights that's a good point You have a good point there in chat. Because, and this is something uh, I kind of wanted to talk about with the Star Guardians, is there is like, there's a thing that happens because they're putting so many more champions and characters into the Star Guardians universe. Um where, like, they're bringing in a lot of adults now, and Oriana especially is a character who just has adult proportions. Um, like, she just does. Her proportions are those of much more of an, like, a, a young adult woman, and it's kind of impossible to get around. The same thing happens with Quinn. Like, we'll talk about that when we talk about Quinn. And it's starting, for me, it's starting to get a little uncanny sometimes. Because, like, it, like, it, like we talked about, it makes sense for Ari, for example, to be more adult because she's supposed to be sort of the old and more experienced counterpart to Lux. It makes sense for Janna to be more adult because she's supposed to be the big sister of the group. And then there's, like... Then we start to get into it with like characters like Senna, like Oriana, like uh, like Quinn, who just kind of. There's an extent to which I, I'm starting to feel they look a little bit too adult to really sort of be believable um, as like high school students, right? Like they're supposed to all be high schoolers. It's a little bit like some of the characters are just designed with proportions that don't really. <laughs> That, that, that just don't really lend themselves towards that. How much of a problem that is right now? Maybe not so much, but it's like... Like, are they going to do Star Guardian Renata Glask at some point? <laughs> like, uh, like, Ilawi? I, I wouldn't be opposed to it. It's just, it seems weirder and weirder that they all are supposed to be high school girls. Maybe at some point they should be adult Star Guardians. Like, maybe at some point some of them should be, like, like older adult Star Guardians that actually... Uh, you know, something like that. Oh, hang on. That is a private DM. That's not for you. Thank you very much for showing that on screen. Tweet deck, you jerk, you bastard, son of a bitch. Hang on. Do I have tweet deck open in? Ah, uh, that's why. Why do I have tweet deck open in you? I'm not supposed to have tweet deck open in you. 
That's why it showed up. Um, what were you we talking about? Right, like, at some point, I feel like maybe we should have adult Star Guardians. Maybe they shouldn't all be high schoolers anymore, is the point I was trying to make. And that's, like, Oriana is one of the characters where it's like, I have trouble believing that this is supposed to be a high school student. But then again, she's a robot who got turned into a real girl, so I guess we can kind of work our way around it. Um... So, like, it's fine. Uh, Oriana is great. I, I really like her character, and she's a perfect fit for Star Guardians. Sona is another one of those, like, I'm surprised she hasn't gotten a Star Guardian skin before this, right? Like, she's another one of those, like, that feels like such a fucking natural fit. You can't believe they haven't done it already. She objectively has, like, the most adorable mascot, just because I have a bias towards rodents, uh, like the little mouse with the round glasses, but also... Again, it's this situation, like, I don't know if I'm just kind of burnt out on Star Guardians a little bit. Like, that, that's sort of my concern with the new season of them, because there are so fucking many of them. It's a little bit like Marvel movies, right? Like, even if the movie is good and, like, entertaining and, like, decent popcorn fodder, you kind of go, oh, they've just announced 48 new Marvel movies, and you just kind of go, ah, oh, I'm so tired, like, fucking hell. Just make, make anything else. I just need to not watch Marvel movies for, like, five years, and so I can, like, get over them. Um... I don't know if that's what's starting to get me, but Sona is another one of the Star Guardian designs. I just don't 100% feel it. And I'm not sure if it's just because I am... It's, if it's just because I'm overloaded with Star Guardians, or if it's because there's something actually wrong with her character design. Because I really don't think there's that much wrong with her character design as such. Um, like, I like the idea of, like, her being sort of, like, more buttoned up, um, like, a, like with the round glasses, a little bit of that nerd, um, vibe. Um, yeah, like, it's, it, there's, there really shouldn't be anything wrong with it. I just have this, I just look at her and I just, I feel no excitement, right? I just, I just feel no excitement. And then there's also, like, yeah, that's the other problem, um, as, as Tia Waddle points out in chat, is, like, her character model is old. Her animations are old. Uh, she desperately, desperately needs a visual update, and she needs it yesterday. And most of her new skins, like, if they aren't, like, legendary or better, they just don't look that great in-game, honestly. Um, she has big band kid energy, but something about it doesn't quite click. Yeah, that's the thing, it's like... Sona is the opportunity to make the character who is, like, the most music character of them all, right? Like, her and Seraphine together would be, like, the music character. Seraphine is the theater kid, like, the one who does all the, like, does, like, wants to do all the singing. Sona is the band kid who wants to do all the playing, which is where, like, again, in terms of the fashion, I think there's a little bit of it in there. Like, if you pay close attention to, to like, the weights design, like, her, her Star Guardian uniform does look a little bit like a band uniform, right? Like, it has a little bit of that, like, that's a little bit in there, where, again, I'm like, couldn't you have pushed that one harder? Like, to push harder for, like, a band uniform feel for her Star Guardian outfit? Because, like, we have seen white coat with, like, bow and gold accents 400 times already now. Um, maybe it's time to push something a little bit harder in more interesting directions rather than just do these tiny little minuscule accents, because that was a problem already with Ari and Misfortune, is that they were too similar. That they needed a little bit more distinct personality to set them apart from one another. And Sona is a little bit that again. I feel like, I feel like it's one of those you could have done more here to set her apart as a character. And that's, um, I'm gonna skip ahead a few steps here, because I've, I've been dying to talk about, um, this particular Star Guardian, so I'm just gonna fucking do it now. Rel. Cause I fucking love Star Guardian Rel. Like, because Rel is is the perfect expression of everything I have just talked about. Um like use what the character is to make something special out of her. And Rel, and this is something I love about the way that they did it in-game. They use the fact that she has these big armor skirts, right? Like, she has these big skirts of armor that follow her around when she's walking. They turn them into the shape of a crinoline dress, so that when she's on foot, like, with the armor all around her, she looks like she's wearing a huge, poofy ball gown. Like, it's that, it's that kind of silhouette language, right? 
and that's so fucking good. Like that's yes, absolutely excellent, fantastic way to use the way that the character is designed to do something interesting. And she also follows up a little bit. Like remember how Poppy used to be the only Star Guardian who actually had armor? Um, I I actually can show you the character model. I have uh for a special occasion. I have for a special occasion obtained, and this is gonna look a little bit weird in practice, but uh, stick with me. There we go. <laughs> little, little bit janky. Uh, it's not quite the same as the model viewer, but uh, Chibin put together these 3D renders for me um, that would walk around. Like you can see how they use the like the shape of the other armor skirts to create the shape of like a crinoline dress, and like cr like very emphasize this high femininity, this hyper femininity um, to the character design at the same time as creating a tension with the fact that she's a brick shit house in armor, right? Like she's wearing a fucking huge set of plate armor and she's like a, she's this huge tank of a character who is like, like striding towards you like, dur, 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 right? So there's this tension between the hyper femininity that's inherent to Star Guardians and then like the sort of, like the, the sort of brutality and violence that's implicit in the way that Rel is put together as a character. And I love that. Like, that's so cool. That's so interesting. Like, that's a really good way to use what the character is already to create an interesting twist and a spin on the Star Guardian aesthetic. And that's the kind of thing where I'm saying, like, what if Misfortune, like Star Guardian Misfortune, had a little bit of pirate fashion in there? What if Sona was a bit more of a band kit? Like, what if Akali was a bit more of a ninja? Like, that they were a bit more differentiated from against each other? in some interesting ways, like, and Rel is like the perfect example of that. Like, I love the way that they put Rel together for this. Um, isn't that the same thing B Battle Queen does? Yes, it is. It is exactly the same thing Battle Queen does. It's exactly the same trick. And that like, I kind of wish they hadn't done it already with that. Like, that's the thing about like, when I do my shorts on Rel, um, I'll talk about this also, but I really do think it kind of sucks that both Battle Queen and Star Guardian, um, like that they are both so similar for Rel in terms of skins for her character, like that they both sort of operate in the same aesthetic space so much. That's a bit of a pity, but you know, it's like, it's fine. Um, it's, it's unfortunate, but you know, that's the way it goes. But no, I love Star Guardian Rel, I love because she's the one who like has that uniqueness to her. Like that, okay, we have the Star Guardian aesthetic, we have the white, we have the gold, we have like the, like the skirts and like the pleating and and all of this stuff, what can we do with that that expresses the uniqueness of the particular character? Well, there you fucking go. This is how you do it. Um, so yeah, okay. Back to the actual pictures. Hang on, wait. Oh no. No, 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 no. Come back, little window. I didn't mean to close you. I didn't mean it. Come back, baby. Uh, there she is, Kaisa. <laughs> now, um... If you follow my channel, you're familiar with my general opinions on Kaisa. They don't apply to Star Guardian. Like my problem with with Kaisa in her base design is essentially her costume, and Star Guardian has a completely different costume. So no, like people people think I hate Kaisa as a character. I don't. I dislike her outfit. I dislike the way that she's costumed, um, primarily. I I like her story. I like it a lot actually. Um, but anyway, Star Guardian Kaisa. I'm not feeling the splash art very much. Um, I forgot to put Sona on the list. You're right, shit, Sona. Where's Sona? Uh, she's like here, needs work. There we go. Fixed it, thank you. <laughs> Whoopsie doopsie. Um, Sky and hating on Kaiza is a meme now. Yeah, and it annoys me a little bit because I feel like people just going, ha ha, TB Sky and hates Kaiza. It's sort of, but that's not my criticism. My criticism is that the character is bad. My criticism is that that there's so much potential and they could have done so much better. Anyway, um, I'm not really feeling the splash art here for whatever. Like, I don't think the pose here is very strong. It's very straight. Um, it's it sort of lacks a, a, a strong line of action. It lacks that curvature. Um, I'm not. I don't really feel the perspective. I like. I don't think this is a particularly great splash art, unfortunately. Um, but let me see if I can find... I think I can find the model viewer for Kaisa, if you just give me a minute. Maybe, with a little bit of luck. I'm not sure if the model viewers have been updated with all the PBE content yet. Sometimes they don't, but let's see. 
Are you there, Star Guardian Kaisa? Maybe. Loading, loading, loading. Hey, it's working. Great. Excellent. Uh, let's just grab her idle animation because this is a little bit better. There we go. Now it's a little bit easier to see what the character is actually doing, right? Um, and I, I, I kind of like Star Guardian Kaisa. Like, I kind of like her. Um, again, I feel like we have the same problem. She looks too much like Lux. Uh, not like Lux. She looks too much like Ari and Misfortune. And again, in the story of Kaisa, there's a little bit of a justification for that because Kaisa is someone like they're sort of repeating the story of Lux, unfortunately, um, which is something that bothers me a little bit about this new season is that they're kind of just doing Lux again with Kaisa in that Lux at this point in the story has become like this legendary star guardian who protected the city from and she got turned into a statue and now Kaisa is sort of trying to pick up the pieces and, and move on, become a new leader for her own team and blah, blah. Like, I feel like they're sort of they're sort of running in circles on that one a little bit, um, which is something that would have worked a lot better if they had actually ever actually bothered to fill in the previous seasons. Like, if it had been, like... It, it feels like a soft reboot kind of thing in terms of what it is as a season um, in anime. And if they had just put in the work of filling out the previous three seasons of shit, right? So that, like, characters actually had story arcs and, like, the parts of, of, of their personal journeys completed and they sort of had resolution. And then we go, okay, here's the new generation of Star Guardians who are taking over where the old generation left off. I would have been, oh, yeah, okay, Kaisa is the new, like, she's sort of sort of repeating some of Lux's story, but she has her own twist on it, or whatever, the friendship with Akali kind of thing. Okay, cool, but because we don't have any of that connective tissue, because we don't have any of that fill-in, it just feels like we're, she's pink, and she's insecure about being a leader for her team of Star Guardians. We're just doing Lux again. What the fuck? Um... So, you know, there's that. Um, and because of that, like, it makes sense that her character design would hew rather close to, like, uh, Misfortune and, and Ari. Because those, like, she's sort of trying to be that idealized, that perfect Star Guardian, like, who, who does everything right. And that's also part of her story. It's like, she's a straight A student who does all of her homework and helps out at the animal shelter. And, like, is doing everything all at once, all the time. Um, and trying to be a great Star Guardian at the same time, and that's causing her to re neglect her relationship with Akali, and, like, that that all makes sense. It's just, in the context of having all these other skins already, I kind of look at Kaisa and I go, okay, but then why get excited for this, then? If it's just a remix of exactly the same thing we've had, like, twice or three times before, why get excited for this? Because she has jetpacks, I guess? Is that the big, like, what's the big draw here? What's the special thing about Kaisa that... Star Guardian Kaisa is supposed to bring bring to the pack. Um, so, like, yeah, it's like, I don't think it's a bad skin. I just think it's at most okay. And that's a problem because this is the fucking legendary, right? Like, this is the one that they put most time, money, and effort into. This is the expensive one with the new animations and the new voice lines and shit. Like, uh, you would hope that that would be higher on the quality list. But I just, I just, yeah, I just don't feel like it gets there. More tea. Akali is also legendary. I know. And for which reason it sucks that she's down here, right? Um. Okay, let's see. There were some super chats. Let me just... I love your content so much, it's almost so... Uh, I think I read that one already. Mao, there was a Reddit thread calling Star Guardian Echo the worst skin in the game and it made me really sad because I enjoyed it. Yeah, like I think Reddit... I didn't read a lot of it. I saw people posting screenshots and shit. It seems like the Redditors got really upset that Echo wasn't, like, masculine enough. Like, they sort of like, oh, he looks too girly, it's gay. Or, like, I feel like there was a lot of that shit going around. Like, sort of that toxic masculinity shit. Um, where they get upset by, a, like, a ma ma male character who looks pretty. So, like, fuck Reddit. I can't... They their, their opinion does not matter on this. Queens of League, maybe. Like, maybe their opinion it matters a little bit. Um, but not but not our League of Legends. Um, let's see. Black Fox Draco says, Bro, the vlogs and LOR skins made them young. Yeah. They did. But, you know. <laughs> that, those are not the ones we're t talking about. Um, 
VV says, I think the new Starcraft ends are less exciting because there's so many now and they're not distinct teams and groups that lend towards Storchan. Yes, there's that too. Um, like, they, th that's the thing is like, they put out 14 new skins. So obviously they're not like, each one is not going to be that exciting. <laughs> like they're, they're, you only have so much hype to go around, right? Um, Jennifer Nisley, happy, happy birthday, Sky. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Thank you for that super chat. Um, but no, yeah, I think Echo is good. Like, I, I also feel like a lot of people had problems with Echo for other reasons that are, like, maybe more legit. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I really like Echo. I think it's a much better version of a male Star Guardian than Esriel is, right? Uh, I, f I feel like that's, it's, it's a way better execution of that. Let's see. So, Neela. She got the Star Guardian as her launch skin, um, which is cool. And, hmm, again, I'm sort of like, the costuming just isn't interesting to me. Like, I think her costuming is, is better um, than, like, we talked a lot about Star Guardians, where, like, the costuming just seems too derivative of the other Star Guardians. But I actually think Neela does a better job. Like, I think, like, the flower petal thing that she's got going on with, like, the, the, with, like, the little uh, skirt thing, whatever that's, that's hanging out of her, I think, like, the way the vest is put together, it's a little bit more interesting. Um, it's a little bit more, but I can't help but think of like, I think of Neela's base character design, right? Like that's inspired specifically by Southeast Asian fashion that, that has like this, this like, like this, this very distinct vibe to it. Um, and this to me feels like, but again, wasn't there an opportunity there to bring, like, if you're like, part of the point of Neela is like, like we're bringing some more diversity into the Star Guardians rather than them all just being like, you know, pale skin. Um, and that's part of the point of, of this new, new crop of Star Guardians is to bring in more, like, a, a more diverse roster of Star Guardians. And I just can't help but feel, okay, but then why not do that with the fashion as well? Like, why not do that, like, bring in more of, of, an, of an interesting vibe for the fashion? I think it does do a better job than most of the Star Guardians. It's just, again, I'm like, push it a little bit further. Like, push it a little bit harder. Do a little bit more because we have seen this basic Star Guardian outfit 400 million times now. It it just isn't interesting anymore. It just it just isn't. I'm sorry. It just can't be because it's been done so many times. If Star Guardian Neela had been the first one, absolutely. Like then it would have been fucking amazing. But mm. and then also, like this is a high school girl. Yeah. Okay. Sure. That, that's a high school girl. I'm, I'm sure that. Yeah. All right. Why not? <laughs> I'll. We'll just run with it. Sure. Sure. Um. It's like, yeah, not, not, not so sure about, about that. So again, I, I'm gonna set her in okay because her fashion does do more. It's just once you start thinking in terms of like what, what more could be done. Like we have done basic magical girl fashion like 18 times now. What? what else can we do? Especially in the context of Rel, right? It's a little, yeah. In the story, she's said to be an old guardian. Yeah, but you know. Oh, she's not a high school girl. Hang on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did I read that wrong then? Because I was checking up on the skin bios before. A powerful guardian who patrols the wider universe, Neela has faced multiple reality-ending threats and returned alive, making her a living legend among her peers. Asked to act as a teacher to the new generation, she has reluctantly accepted her new responsibilities, though if a particular big monster appears, she always calls dibs. Okay, so I didn't get that vibe. Um from that. Like, I got the vibe that she was a Star Guardian who's, like, traveled a lot and who's, like, again, like Ari is supposed to be a bit older, like a senior. Um, but I, I thought she was still supposed to be a high school student. But okay, like, fair enough. If she's not supposed to be that, then cool. Hmm. Neela is set up to be a mentor to Akali and Kaisa sent by Syndra. Yeah. Um, makes sense. Start Guardian set and Aphelios. Please make them boyfriends. Ha! <laughs> 
I mean, yeah, we'll talk about that near near the end. Like, I have a little, I have a little discussion about like who should be Star Guardians next and whether anyone should be. Um, but yeah. Anyway, Nila's fine. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong. It's just me. Yeah. Which moves us on to Quinn, and I, I really wanted to like Quinn. I really wanted to like this character design. I like, I like Quinn a lot as a character. I like her base character design so much. I just don't think this works. I'm just... I just don't think Quinn works. Um, I think the mask is interesting. Like, I think the mask is an interesting idea, but it clashes really badly with the way... Like, the way that her hair, like, moves under it, and, like, the way her hairstyle is this, this sort of shapeless, not much of anything. And it's... And partly that comes down to Quinn's base character design, right? She is a pretty damn well armored up character. Like she's this scout who patrols, patrols the frontier. So she has like heavy leather armor and she has like like a, a really like, really cool bird themed outfit on her character model that also makes her pretty clunky. It makes like she is kind of a clunky character. She is kind of, of like more of a, um, like a little bit more built um, than a lot of other League of Legends uh, women are. And that sort of reflects into her character design as a Star Guardian, like with this heavy hood and like like that all this extra padding on the skirts and stuff that they kind of have to put on there to match her main character model. And like, I just, it becomes too detail heavy for me, right? Like, I think it's good that they're trying something interesting. I think it's good that they're trying, like they give her this, this cloak, right? Like of things that sort of look like bird feathers. And they do the same thing with this skirt skirting around like her waist. It's just that, plus the skirt, plus the bow, plus like the vest thing, plus the hood, plus the mask, plus all of the other things. It's an overload of detail. Um, and it just feels like, it feels, it feels too saturated. Like it feels too busy. And I just, I wish the bird theme was more obvious and clear. It just, I just don't feel it is. Like she's supposed to be the bird themed Star Guardian, right? Like. That's supposed to be her more than anything is the one who has the bird theming in her thing. That's what the mask is, like this feather mask with the bird motif. And it just gets lost. I think there's too many details. I just think there's too much detail front loaded onto it and it becomes just kind of muddied out rather than becoming clear and sort of and sort of distinct. Um, that's just me, but like, I just, I just don't vibe with it. Like it, the idea is good, but I just don't think the execution is. Oh, there was... Hey, Yama! Thank you for that super chat. Happy birthday. Well, thank you. I... Dude. Anytime you need to call, dude. Seriously. Let's hang out. Let's chat. Um, There were some other super chats also. Ferrum Urbis. Hey, Sky. I just wanted to say I appreciate the content that you make. Uh, analyze in detail down to their bearish bones. This is a favorite pastime of mine. You're great. Thank you very much for that super chat. And thank you for showing up. Star Nemesis skins for Jin, Lissandra, and Evelyn, or I'm rioting. Mm, no. No. No, I don't think so. But I'll, I'll talk about that later. But thank you for the super chat default error. Um, Hero of Mithra, the saving grace of Quinn is that they actually did something with Valor. He's a little griffin cat bird boy. Yeah, I like that too. I like that quite a lot. Uh, thank you for that super chat. Shifu, happy birthday, young one. Oh, thank you, old man. Thank you very much. Like I hope I hope uh, I hope your bones aren't turning to dust too much today. <laughs> Mine are too. Um, Negative and Kraken. I would love to see Star Guardian Tarek. Yeah, Star Guardian Tarek could work. I think. Well, maybe not. Mm, we'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. Quinn would have had been better as a high noon. Eh, I don't think so necessarily. I think Quinn just needed to be s stylized a little bit and simplified as a Star Guardian, and it would have worked. But you know, yeah. Anyway, Senna. The first thing I want to say, the fucking little shark bullet thing. Yes, that rules. That's fantastic. I love that. That's an excellent little little companion thing. I also have a distinct and permanent weakness in my heart for women with enormous giant guns. Just like women with big cannons. Yes, it, I, I love it. It's good. Uh, just inherently, it's a good thing. And so I have a bias in favor of Star Guardian Senna because she has a giant cannon. Um... Would you work for Riot if they offered you a job? That depends a lot on the job, and probably not. <laughs> but yeah, Star Guardian Senna. 
here is where I think they do something interesting with the fashion. Like here you can see they they move away from the from like the standard Star Guardian outfit with the vest, right? And the bow um on the front. That's sort of been the sort of the standard Star Guardian outfit for so long. They do try and do something more interesting, turning into more of a dress. Um or a pantsuit, kind of, maybe, with, like, the legging that goes all the way up. Like, they do something a little bit more interesting to sort of give her a distinct fashion apart from the other Star Guardians. Like, they give her the long sleeves and things, which I think is all better. I think it's all more interesting. Um, and I do love the braids. Like, braids like that, like, especially with, like, the colored braids woven in without, like, throughout the rest of the hairstyle, I think that rules. I think that that's really cool. And it's like, it's, it, it's it's something that makes the hair a lot more a part of the character design, right? Um, as a wise man once said, bitches love cannons. Yes. Yes, indeed. I gave that bitch a cannon. Bitches love cannons. <laughs> uh, uh, the shark is Lucian, right? <laughs> I mean, I guess. Um, but no, I, I really like Star Guardian Senna. I don't think she's exceptional. Like, I don't think she's like... I don't think she's like she's like a mind blower or anything. I don't think she's like naturally perfect, but I think she's damn good. And I think they're they're doing something with the fashion to set her apart, um, so she, that she doesn't look like she's just wearing another misfortune outfit, right? Will this turn into a video? Uh, it'll be a vod. It'll be available for you to watch back once it's over. It I won't edit it into a specific video. Um. So yeah, Senna's fine. Like she 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 she's pretty damn good. Uh, which gets us... Let's do Gwen. Let's talk about Gwen real quick. Um, because I actually kind of quite like Gwen as a Star Guardian character. I don't... We don't really ever get a great look at her character design because it's LOR cards. Like, we don't have a 3D model that we can turn around. Um, but I do, again, with Gwen, I like that they do something more interesting with the dress, right? Like, that Gwen has this, like, train... That sort of that sort of falls behind her. So she has like the the little pleated skirt up front, and then she has this train that falls behind her, um, and works out. Beyond that, the rest of her fashion is a little bit like again. I feel like Gwen being the fashion character, they could have done more with that. Um, but there's like a lot of top heavy detail in her hair. The fact that the scissor is all Star Guardian themed and like really sort of fancy, I love that. That's that's cute and adorable. But. Yeah, she's fine. Um, like, I like that they tried to do something with the dress in an interesting way. Like, they can do stuff in Legends... And the thing is, like, in Legends of Runeterra... Where did she go? There she is. In Legends of Runeterra, you can do so much more because you don't have to f worry about being consistent with the character model. Um, you don't have to worry about that. Like, you can do whatever the fuck you want because you don't have to work around a 3D model. So I feel like, again, like... Maybe they could have gone a little harder on that. Like, maybe they could have gone a little bit more wild with Gwen uh, than what they did. But I guess, like, probably with Riot, they have some sort of something. Like, they have some sort of internal guideline that says you cannot deviate more than X from the style guide or whatever. Um, but, you know, it is fine. Then we got the one that everybody got mad about. Like, oh my god, people got pissed about this. Star Guardian Seraphine Wild Rift exclusive. Um, and Star and Seraphine is again one of those characters that's like, no, yeah, of course Seraphine was gonna get a Star Guardian skin. Like, of course she was. Like, there's no way in hell, there's literally no way on earth that Seraphine wouldn't get a Star Guardian skin at some point or in like, of course she would. Like, what the fuck do you think? Of course she gets a Star Guardian skin at some point. But wow, did the PC Star Gu Le uh, League of Legends players not like <laughs> that it was Wild Rift exclusive? Whoa, there was a lot of salt spilled that day. Um, there was a lot of salt spilled that day. <laughs> and as someone who like who thinks nobody should play League of Legends, um, I just had fun with that. But Riot should have seen that coming. Like, they should have seen it coming. Like, that the, that the Seraphine stands would be a little bit, un, like, displeased um, with that. Like, really? You're su you can't be surprised by that, surely. Um, and the fake leak, please? Yeah. <laughs> it will be brought in next year. Yeah, yeah, but... <laughs> to have some ninja. I... This is... I don't know this for sure, but... I am personally 100% convinced that Seraphine was supposed to be... Wild Rift exclusive. 
Like, she was supposed to be fully a Wild Rift exclusive. She was supposed to draw in more people to playing Wild Rift on their phone. Like, that's, that's the point of having Wild Rift exclusive skins, is to draw over the crowd from PC. Um, like, that, that's the point of them. And then when so many people got so fucking mad and yelled at them so much, like someone at Riot made a thing of like, well, we might bring her to PC and the, like, she could come to PC. Sure, sure, we'll bring her to PC. Like, she's temporarily Wild Rift. <laughs> sure, why not? Stop yelling at us. Like, I, I fully believe that it was a thing of like, uh-oh, shit, we maybe, ooh, we pushed them too far. <laughs> I fully believe that it, it, it might have been that. Um... But, yeah, you know, it's like, yeah, like, upset the Seraphine stands at your peril. They are, mostly they're fine. Most of the Seraphine stands are just having fun. Most of the Seraphine stands are, like, perfectly decent people who are just having fun on Twitter and, like, being, like, sort of catty queers with each other. It's fine. Some of them are fucking psychopaths. Some of them need to go to all kinds of therapy. Like, some of them need to not be allowed on social media anymore. Some of them, a small number are fucking crazy. Uh, so yeah, like, up upset them at their, at uh, your own peril. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, Nikki knows. Nikki knows. Uh, um, so anyway, the character design itself. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's Seraphine as a Star Guardian. Of course it's good. Like, it makes perfect sense. I do like that what they've done with her hair. Like, I do like that they went with this, um, sort of looks a little bit like she cut her own hair kind of vibe. Um, <laughs> like, like she wanted to give herself bangs. Um, it look, it looks a little bit, it looks a little bit like that. And I kind of like that. I kind of like that, that like she's not quite perfect because that's also seems to play into the way that her character is played as a star guardian. Like in the way that they present her in the, um, in the animated shorts. Um, she's like, she's very much like the Lulu of the new group in that sense. Like, she's the one who's like, um, who's like wild and out there. It's like, hey, let's make a video. Like, she's the one who's sort of like hyper enthusiastic and sort of very, like, uh, like very cheerful and very up there. Uh, has 80s energy, 80s gem energy. Yeah, it's a little bit like, she's a goof. She's a little bit of, uh, of a weirdo. She's probably the kind of character who would decide to cut her own hair and then it goes terribly wrong, but then she somehow fucking makes it work, work anyway. That feels authentic to Seraphine. Like that feel that feels like a fun direction to take the character in. But the thing I like the most about Star Guardian Seraphine <laughs> is the fucking like she's there la 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 and they're like <laughs> I love them. I love them so much. Because, because I just imagine, I just imagine that like Seraphine shows up, right? And she's like, la, 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 la. And then these two motherfuckers come in and they're fully doing like metal screaming like. <laughs> like fully, fully doing just death metal screaming. Like I'm sure they're not, but just, I just. <laughs> uh I just, I love that so much that Seraphine is like all like, la, 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 la. <laughs> they're just like fucking, they're fucking yelling, man. <laughs> I love, I, I love that. I, I, I am, I'm 100% on board with that. Um, that's just so good. Like, that's so fucking funny. Like, visually, as an image, this is so fucking funny. Right? Like, it's just when you think about it for more than two seconds, it's just the most fucking hilarious thing. And it's, of course, it's because she attacks with sound, right? Like, she attacks with her music. So, like, she'll she'll roll up on some Voidborn something something and just, like, point this little motherfucker right in front of their face and just go, <laughs> Foghorn effect. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's, it, yes, absolutely. Like, like, having Seraphine, like, this sort of cutesy little petite, sweet little Seraphine paired with these loudspeaker motherfuckers, it's just so good. Um, yeah. Like, no, yeah, Sarah, Star Guardian Seraphine is great. She's not perfect, but she's, she's great. I really... 
<laughs> I really like it. Um, which moves us on to... Who do we have here? Ah. Prestige Syndra. So, uh, I'm not sure I fully understand what they're doing with the Prestige skins recently. Um, because what I've been told is that... Like, that they're supposed to be... Um, that they're not... Like, this is not actually Star Guardian Syndra. Like, that, that this, the Prestige skins that they're making now are like, what if there was a fashion show in the real world and then people showed up to like a high hot couture fashion show wearing fashion that was inspired by the skins? Uh, um, yeah, like, okay, right? Um... I sort of don't. I, I'm not. I'm not 100 sure. I, un I understand it, um, but I think as a Star Guardian Syndra skin, like as a version of Star Guardian Syndra, this is bad. Like if it's meant to be inspired by or a version of Star Guardian Syndra, like fashion inspired by the skin, I don't think this is very good. But I'm also not like. I'm also not super attached to that conclusion because, like, I don't... I fully admit, haute couture and, like, high fashion and shit, I don't fully understand that. Like, I'm not... I'm not dialed into that part of the art world. I'm not... I'm... It's not really my special subject. So maybe, like, from that perspective, it's good. Um... Like, maybe from the perspective and, and the context of high fashion and, and stuff like that, maybe it's it's a good inspiration of that. But, like, when I think of Star Guardian Syndra, and we talked about this, right? Let me see if I can find her splash art. Um, like, the, one of the things that sets her apart is that she has this very strong iconography. She has these, like, like long diamond shapes. Long, sharp, pokey diamond shapes. Like, it, it's on her crown. It's, like, the tattoo she's got on her face. It's on her eye patch, it's on, like, her shoulder, it's on her dress. That is the iconography of Star Guardian Syndra. It's all over her character design. And then I look at this, and it's like, where, where, where did it go? You took a lot of it away. And you, instead of, you should have, like, it feels like you should have had that diamond here, right? Like, that, those diamonds should have been, not these stars, but the diamonds should have been there. And the headpiece should have had that shape on it. Instead of these di these star shapes, if it's inspired by Star Guardians, surely you should incorporate the the shape language of Star Guardian Syndra. Like, because like there, like Syndra has uh, in her base form that exact same. No, not yeah, ah. Uh, she has that exact same thing on the on the puff of her sleeve, but then they turned into a different shape that isn't the iconic. Star Guardian Syndra shape, so I don't like it's as as a version of Star Guardian Syndra. I think this is bad. I don't think it looks like Star Guardian Syndra. Like the only thing that looks like Star Guardian Syndra is the orbs and maybe the crown a little bit. But on its own, it's like fine. Like it's 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 cool. It's a great outfit. Um, like I I talked a lot during this stream about how much I want the Star Guardians to do something different with fashion. Like here's an idea. Like, hey, there, there's something to work, like the chains and like the, yeah, sure, but it's fine as a skin. It's just as Star Guardian Syndra, I don't think it's good at all. So that's just, that's just a part of, of something I don't, I don't think I fully understand. So, you know, whatever. Moving on to Talia. And uh, so let's talk about Talia. So for those who don't know the story. Way back during Talia's development, when they were first pitching this character internally at Riot, the people who started coming up with the character got together. Like, a writer, a, a, a game designer, artist, got together and talked about, okay, what do we want this character to be? And one of the ideas that they pitched with each other and sort of agreed on was, what if we made Talia the first trans character in the game? Like, what if we made a character who was specifically supposed to be transgender? Like, specifically supposed to be, like, th they embody that identity. And that was part of the development process for the character. That was part of the intent for what they wanted the character to be. But somewhere along the development process, 
it got dropped. Like, somewhere along the development process, someone made the decision, like, this would be too hard to get through. Like, management is never going to go for it. Management is never going to, like, they're never going to want to do it. So, like, it's just, just sort of quietly got dropped. And it really, it didn't really become part of the character. It never became, a, it has never been a canonical part of the character, right? Um, and this is something that, like, as Maurice Snack says, yes, they chickened out. Like, they didn't want to push for it because they really wanted to make the character. They were really in love with the character. They were in love with the ability kit. They wanted to make her. And they knew that if they insisted that she had to be trans, they might not get to make the character at all. Right? So that was one of those things that fell by the wayside because they were like, yeah, we probably can't get this through. We want to, but it's not. Um, so that sort of happened behind the scenes and no one really knew about it. Talia comes out. She's like not a very popular character, unfortunately, even though she's fantastic. Um, and then eventually this comes out on Twitter. Like uh, uh, some of the developers start talking about the, the development process of the character on Twitter. And it comes out that, hey, Talia was actually supposed to be trans. Like that was part of what we wanted the character to be when, when we were developing her. Um, and the community starts picking up on this and Talia sort of becomes an icon to the trans parts of the League of Legends community. And they sort of start adopting her as a bit of their mascot, right? So fast forward to the release of characters like Nico, for example, and like other characters that have voice lines that interact with, with Talia, other stories about Talia, and people start to notice, hey, Nico has like this voice line that implies that Talia underwent some sort of change, like that she changed as a person. Um, and like her stories have these little, like nothing explicit, never ever something explicit, but just like these little hints, these little pokes that are sort of a little bit like, oh, okay, like trans people start to pick up on this, especially because they know what this this coding looks like. Um, and so over time, more and more when Talia shows up in, in media and stories, the artists and the writers at Riot keep sort of pushing, hey, we would like you for you to think of Talia as trans. We would like for you to think about her like that. We can't say it outright. We can't confirm it. The best we can do is a little bit of queer baiting, but we would like you, for you to think about her like that. And that comes to a head with Star Guardian Talia. Uh, let me see if I can find the screenshot. That comes to a head with Star Guardian Talia, who in the um, in the visual novel, for example, Talia mentions multiple times that how, like, when she's not wearing the Star Guardian outfit, she's like, she wears hoodie, she likes to wear big baggy clothes, she kind of doesn't feel at home in the clothes that she's wearing or the body that she has, which is like, that is very, very trans coded. <laughs> um, like, that's a lot of trans girls are like nodding along to that and go, yeah, no, yeah, I get it, girl, I fully understand. And she has this thing of like, when she's in her Star Guardian outfit, she feels more like herself. Like, this feels like a true expression of who she is as a person, kind of thing. And then there was, God damn it, I can't find it. Uh, All right, it's kind of freaking. It was the candy corn in the illustration. They posted it. Uh. Okay, hang on. Let me. I need to do a Twitter shirt. God, I should have prepared this ahead of time. I'm sorry. Uh, I I forgot to do that. Uh, Talia, candy corn. How are there no? I saw people talking about this on Twitter. Fuck off. Well, I can't find it, but oh, here it is. Found it, found it. There it is. Then Riot Games Music releases this official piece of artwork for Talia where she has this drawn this little candy corn in the corner of her book that is specifically in the colors of the trans flag. Pink, white, blue. Um, and this is also something that comes through in the um, in the Star Guardian uh, Sessions music video where she's running around. Her outfit is pink, blue, and white. Like, there's a lot of coding here, right? So what it seems to be is that the writers and the artists and the actual people who, does the, who do the creative work internally at Riot are like, no, yeah, we think of her as fully trans as well. Like, this is a trans character. We want her to be seen as a trans character. Uh, we think of her as a trans character but they just aren't allowed to confirm it. They aren't allowed to say it out loud. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Like, it is genuinely true, and this is the only defense I will offer of Riot, it is genuinely true that if Riot comes out, like, too much in favor of queer rights, 
they could put their employees in certain countries at risk. Like their employees in certain countries could be thrown in jail and they could be tortured. Like that's a thing that can actually happen in some parts of the world if you just like if you just work at a company that publishes what's considered gay propaganda, right? Um that's the defense I'll allow them is like that's a th they have to think about the safety of their staff and their employees. Yes, fair enough, fine, whatever. I've heard through the grapevine, and this is like secondhand information, like I've heard from people who know like, that there are also executives in Riot itself, like people who are like who control the money, who are like in, in charge of a lot of the company, who just have put down a prohibition and said, no, like no canon trans characters ever. We, we won't do it because it's too political and it's too divisive and we don't want to do it because like, um, like that's, that's secondhand information, heard it through the grapevine, nothing official. Let's, this is this rumors and speculation, but that's just the th kind of thing I have heard. Um, and one thing I want to point out, it's not China. Well, rather, it's not just China. Um, like, China is a homophobic and transphobic country, to an extent. Like, they definitely have some, some unpleasant laws in that regard. But, like, have you seen the state of the United States recently? Have have you been to Poland in the last few years? Have do you know what's what it's like in Hungary, in Britain, right now, for trans rights, for queer rights? Like it's not just like people are very eager to blame China, right? They're very eager to blame. Oh, it's China. Oh, it's Russia. Yeah, no, it's it's also the fucking America. It's also Britain. It's also European nations. Like. There's enough homophobia and transphobia in those places as well that, like, yeah, censorship happens. And by the way, if you are someone who considers yourself in favor of free speech, um, you should be outraged by this. The artists and creatives, the people who actually make the game, um, want to tell this story, and they are being censored from telling that story. So if you're a free speech warrior, you should be, uh, you should be on their side about this. Just fucking saying. Um, anyway, that's the backstory of why Talia is often considered a trans character in the community is because it seems pretty fucking clear with the evidence that the people who are writing her, the people who are designing her, want her to be seen that way, even if they can't say it out loud. Tiari, yes, absolutely. This is where we can talk about Legends of Runeterra. Um, Legends of Runeterra has been the banner, uh, the standard bearer for tr for queer representation in League of Legends, in uh, the League of Legends IP, for a long time because they can get away with it easier. Like, for it's much easier in Legends of Runeterra to have a character who is, like, gay in one territory, but we just change the text around a little bit in the homophobic countries so that they're not gay over there. So they have had a much easier time, like, managing, like, navigating censorship in that way. And that has led to characters like Tiari, um, who was, like, the first official trans character in League of Legends, I believe. Uh, more recently, they put out the Buru Captain, or the Buru Leader, something like that. It, it has, the, the, the card has a name, something along those lines, um, who's a trans mask character, who's the first trans mask character um, in... Um, in the game um and the same thing like this so there's a lot more queer representation in legends of runeterra because it's easier for them to navigate around the requirements of censorship um so that's why Le league of legends on the other hand much more difficult like it's yeah and also legends of runeterra is a smaller product like legends of runeterra is riot's smallest product by far so they can kind of get away with shit easier because they are not so high profile um Anyway, that's why, um, that's why people say trans Talia so much. Um, and that's certainly something that seems to be like in, like in, in evidence in the way that they've, they've promoted, uh, Star Guardian Talia as well. I, I am not sort of familiar enough with like the tropes of, um, of like trans girl fashion and like, like the ways that, that those characters are coded to say specifically whether Talia's splash art here and or like Star Guardian Talia herself, her character design, is trans coded. I'll leave that up to trans people to to like to like make the call on that. Um, for my money, I quite like a lot of the things about uh, her fashion design here. Like I like this little frilly 
like shoulder core thing. Like it's sort of a little bit grandma like, isn't it? Like it's it's sort of a little bit old fashioned in kind of a charming way. Um, that I quite like. Like I like that they're doing something with her fashion a little bit. Again, it's a little bit we're still with the white coats and like the bow with the thing on the on the front. Like we're still doing very standard Star Guardian fashion. I again feel like they could have pushed this further. They could have done something more interesting. But again, if Talia is meant to be a trans character, it would make sense for her to have like a more sort of traditionally feminine presentation. Like, in terms, like if that's the kind of story that you want to tell about her, is that she feels much more at home in her Star Guardian outfit because it's a more, um, it's a more like for her, it's a more authentic representation of herself. Um, it's like yeah, again, that's I'm not really well versed enough in the tropes of that kind of character design to comment on that. But that's an option. For my money, like, from my perspective, like, the very cis perspective is, I wish they pushed the fashion a little harder. Like, I like that they're doing something with, like, the frilly, frilly little, um, poncho, like, whatever the hell this thing is. I like that they've got some different shape language going on with, like, the pleating on this thing. Did they really then have to go and just make it the standard Star Guardian outfit from, like, the shoulders down? Like, maybe there's something more interesting you could have done there. I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is, like, she's good. Like, she, she is a perfectly, uh, somewhere between great and okay, um, Star Guardian character design. <laughs> ah, okay, let, let me make some people mad. Bad. Bad. Redeemed Zion Rakan? Bad. Bad. Don't like it. Bad. Not good. I don't like it. I think it's not good. <laughs> I, I genuinely don't think it's good. Um, first of all, because remember everything we talked about? Remember everything we talked about why they work so fucking well as villains? Remember everything we talked about, how everything about them is so good for being Star Guardian villains? Yeah, all of that is the same reasons why it's bad for... Th they, they don't work as heroes. They don't work as heroes. Like it's, they're too old for one thing. Motherfucker, they're Zaya is supposed to be in high school. No, Rakan is supposed to be like a high school delinquent. No, fuck off. Fuck off with that, first of all. But also like, no, they're too old. They are like, they are like everything that worked about them as villain designs, like the dark teal, and, like the dark purple and pink that goes on with Zaya, like that worked so well with the dark parts of of like of like the star guardian costume that's been turned dark it's like way less interesting and way less good when it's contrasted against the bright white of a redeemed star guardian outfit yes they're cute yes they're adorable this is a wonderful incredibly romantic like fucking if i was a romantic if i wasn't a romantic i would want what they have this is fucking this is relationship goals probably i don't know about that but like probably this is relationship goals this is like Fuck yeah. And I completely understand that, like, if you if you watch the animated short, right, like, the, and you read the story that tells about, like, Saya and Rakan, like, how, how Rakan sacrificed himself for her and now she's trying to save him. That's a good story. Like, that's, that's great. It's just everything about their character designs, all of it, everything about their character designs as Star Guardians was designed to be the villains. And you can't just make them the good guys, like that and be like yeah we don't need to change the character design beyond just flipping the color switch from light to dark no you needed to do something fucking more like you need if you were gonna turn them good again you have to do something more with their color design especially like the little fucking um like their their little uh their familiars Remember how I talked about that these little owls with like their big vampire cowls and like their little horns on their head like they make them look devilish birdlet things like they were perfect as the familiars of villains? Yeah, they're not so great as the familiars of good guys. Like it, you can't you can't just swap like flip the switch like someone says in chat. You can't just flip the switch over to light mode and then be like, "There we go. They are good now." No, you have to do something more. Like you if if you're gonna want to code these characters as heroes, you have to do more than just turn the, the dark parts of their costumes bright. Like, no, this is not enough. This is bad. I don't like it. And I stand by that. Deal with it. Anyway. Philistix and Morgana are perfect. Uh, just, just gonna get that out there. 
Let me see if I can find this splash out. My assets are all out of order. There he is. There's our boy. There is our boy. I love Star Nemesis Fiddlesticks. Like, I think that's a perfect use of Fiddlesticks as a character. This is so fucking... This is so fucking Tumblr sexy man. Uh, well, maybe not Tumblr sexy man, but this, like, there's something about this design specifically that is so much... Feels like someone's over-designed OC. It's a witch from Madoka Magica. Yes, absolutely, that reference is in there. But this feels so much like someone's over-designed OC, and I mean that as a compliment. I mean that in a good way. Like, I mean that in a good way that this feels like an over-designed OC. This feels like something that's so extra, that's so much too much. Like, with the fucking, like, with the, the split-open demon face and the cage with the creature in it and, like, the ma multiple hands that make up the arm and, like, the gloves and, like, the white suit and the crown and the long, t long tongue and the scythe and the spikes coming out of the arm and the fucking like, mane of whatever the fuck this is, and, like, the spike legs, and the hand that holds the little lantern. Like, it's so much too much. It's so much extra. All the, yeah, as, 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 as Quapsy says in chat, all the colors clash, and, like, it's so over the top, and so fucked up, and wild, and chaotic, and weird, that it works. Like, it's, 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 again, it's that difficult balance of being too much, but just enough too much, right? Um, have you seen people sw uh, swoon over Fiddly on on Twitter? Yeah, Fiddle on Twitter. Yeah, I have. Like, oh, people are horny for this Fiddlesticks. They were also horny for the, the base Fiddlesticks, but they are horny for this Fiddlesticks. Um, like, it's so much too much in a good way. And that's a really fucking difficult balance to walk because, like, if they had done just a little bit more too much, like, maybe the gloves on the hand are a little bit, like, maybe you could give him claws instead or something. Like, maybe there's a, there's a few things I could criticize, but, like, if they had gone just a little bit more too far, this would have been cringe. Like, it would have been, it would have been kind of try hard and lame, but it's just, it's just enough too much. Like, it's just enough... It's just right there at the edge of where it becomes cringe. And that's where it's supposed to be, because again, this is a Madoka Magica villain. This is like, this is this is from that kind of overwrought, over-designed, sort of, it's like, hyper-detailed, slightly, like, immature sensibility. Like, it, it, is, it is meant to be a little bit juvenile. It's meant to be a little bit immature. So when we represent evil, we do that by giving it way too much deal. Like, this is like a, this is like a general design principle. Um, heroes and heroic characters tend to be underdesigned just a little bit. Think of uh, Luffy from One Piece. Think of Goku. Uh, think of Sailor Moon herself, um, <clears throat> for example. Like, these characters tend to be relatively simple. They tend to be relatively underdesigned. They tend to be relatively sort of iconic. Simple shapes that are relatively easy to draw. Villains, on the other hand, have a tendency to be overdesigned. Villains have a tendency to have way more detail on them. Way more shit. Like, just way more stuff going on with them as a general rule um and that general principle is just taken up to 11 here and yeah no i think it's perfect i think it's perfect i think it works i think it works so good which leads us on to Morgana. Like, I've seen a lot of conflicting opinions on Morgana. A lot of people are like, step on me, mommy. Uh, because there's always people saying, step on me, mommy. A lot of people are a little bit disappointed with her. I really like her. I I think she's good. Like, I think it's nice. I don't know that she should have been a star nemesis, necessarily. Like, I think... Yeah, I mean, the, the, the terminology around it is a little bit... Like, I think Zoe should have been a star nemesis then. Um... Like, if, if that's just the name for the bad guys, but I think Fiddlestick should be a star nemesis, and then Morgana should be something else. But here's the thing, Morgana is not a star guardian. She's not a star guardian, she's not a fallen star guardian, she's not an evil star guardian, she's not like Zoe. Right? Like, she's not the same kind of character as Zoe. She's something else. She's a some demonic presence, some evil queen from outer space. Um, and that, again, like, this is very, very classic magical girl villain shit. Right? Like, this is, like, like um, we talked about this already. Like, what identifies magical girls often is that they are young. Like, they tend to be high school age. They tend to be school age. They tend to be, like, children who are learning how to grow up. And their villains have a tendency to be more adult and more adult-coded. They have a tendency to be more... 
uh, mature. Like, a lot of the villains in Sailor Moon, for example, are adult women. Like, specifically, like, adult women whose powers revolve around some part of adult life that Sailor Moon then has to deal with and overcome. I remember one storyline, um, specifically that, like, where there's, like, a villain who manipulates people by making them addicted to, like, I think it's jewelry or makeup or something. Um, where it's like, it's like this, this seduction of adulthood, like this fear of being adult. And Morgana is a pretty damn good pick for that. Like, I think maybe Renata Glask. Like, I, I will say... If this this had been Renata Glask instead of Morgana, I think it would have been better. I think I think it would have been better. Like if she wasn't a, a substantially, a, a, like very specifically, a much older woman. Um, but like if they want to make Renata a villain later on down the line, I would not be opposed to that at all. Um, but like Morgana is a good fit for that, like that archetype. And as people are bringing up in chat, also the kill la kill reference. And the kill la kill reference is like this. These are explicitly a kill la kill reference visually. Also other stuff, but like these things specifically like are very, very, very clearly drawn from that from that particular aesthetic. Like there is some there is some uh, Rakyo um Kirian. I th yeah, Rakyo Kiryun. I'm bad at those names. There's definitely those vibes to her. Like the domineering, confident, like um manipulative evil older woman. Right? Um, which again is why I think maybe Renata Glask would have been a better fit. Um, like that's definitely in there. Um, so like, I think this works. I think like, like I can see, I have my, if I have a criticism, it's that again, the fashion, again, she's, she's using Star Guardian iconography, right? Like, there's Star Guardian aesthetics all over her, like the, the gold or brass, I guess, trimmed rim around this, like, white chest piece, and, like, the gold rim around, like, a lot of her, um, accessories, like the star-shaped pendant on her chest. I feel like maybe they shouldn't have given her quite so many Star Guardian aesthetics, like, they shouldn't have borrowed quite so much from Star Guardian fashion, for this character, like, I, again, I feel like there could have been more done to sort of set her apart a little bit in that regard. I like everything from the waist down. Don't take that out of context. Um, <laughs> um, like, I like the dress. I like, uh, like, the, the multiple overlapping layers, the flowing robes, like, the, the sort of evil universe that you can see inside it. I like the wings. I like the use of these, like, oil slick colors. Like, it looks like oil, right? Like, it looks like oil slick on water, like, with the, with, like, the, the yellow and the blue and the purple transitioning into, like, these other colors. Like, she looks like oil. She looks a little bit like pollution. She looks like something synthetic and kind of slimy in a way, but in, in I guess, kind of a horny way. So, like, yeah, I think she works. Although, like, again, with the same caveats that we've applied to everything else, it's like, I feel like something more could have been done with the fashion around here. Um, I think, and this is something I don't say often, I think she could have been more sexualized. Like, like in her villain form, like when she's doing full big bad villain uh, Empress of the Universe thing, I think she could have been more sexualized. I think it could have been more horny. Like I think there could have been like more cleavage or like more skin being shown. Again, to accentuate that threat, that difference, right? Like that the Star Guardians themselves are adolescents. They are not adults yet. And then Morgana as a representation of all those adult things that are like threatening to their identity. Um, thighs, for example. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> like, I understand why they didn't. Like, it's not necessarily a good idea, but I think it's something that you could have done um, to sort of accentuate that, like, the specific kind of threat that Morgana represents thematically. Anyway. Moving on to... Uh the last discussion of the day. If you follow my shorts, you'll know this already. Like, you'll not be surprised by this. But this is a fucking cop-out. This is weak. This is, this is, this is, this is weak shit. This is weak. I don't know. Not, not good enough, Riot. Pajama Guardian. He's just a big fan. No, fuck you. Make Urgot a Star Guardian. Make Urgot a real Star Guardian. Like, this... There was such an opportunity here. So, the meme around Urgot as, like, Star Guardian Urgot is, ha ha ha, Urgot is ugly, Urgot is super masculine, and he has spider legs, so he can't be a Star Guardian because he's ugly. Ha ha ha. That's the meme around Urgot, right? 
Like, it, it would be funny to make him a Star Guardian because it's stupid and because it could never, ever possibly work. I say, fuck yes it could. There's a million ways that you could have made it work, and you should have. Riot made this skin in response to the meme, right? Like, because they wanted to sort of acknowledge, oh yeah, there's this community meme going on. Let's, okay, let's put Urgot in the Star Guardian universe, kind of just for the fun of it. And, like, I applaud the impulse. Like, I like the instinct to do that. I'm trying to make tea while I'm talking, so just excuse me for a second. Um, I applaud the in... Oh, no. Ah, I've got honey on my microphone. No! Get off. No, 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 Okay, I should not, I should not make tea while I'm talking. Um, I applaud the instinct. I think the instinct is right, but don't, you should have gone with it. Like, you should have actually done it. And people have already, like, people in chat have already said this. Make him a mecha. Like, make it like a little kid, like a little... Some 12-year-old girl or something, like the 8-year-old girl or whatever, who's like a super genius, anime super genius girl, who made a big mecha Star Guardian thing so she could fight alongside her, like, the Star Guardians and, and like, like, because she's a fangirl or whatever. Like, you could have done any number of things to make him an actual Star Guardian instead of this... Like, where you're still taking the piss, right? Like, you're still saying, ha, 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 yeah, Urgot could never be a real Star Guardian. Ha, 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 he's ugly. Ha, 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 he's masculine. Ha, 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 he could never... Like, they're, you're just playing into the joke. You're just agreeing with them that, oh, Urgot could never be a Star Guardian. That's weak. It's weak. That is weak sauce bullshit. And this is a weak sauce response to a meme. Penny Parker, yeah, exactly, like like in uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Penny Parker from Into the Spider-Verse is an ex a, a perfect example of the kind of thing you could have done. Like, or just actually, like, remember how the Star Guardians, they have this dark secret at the heart of their universe, right? Like, there's this dark secret, oh, the Star Guardians fall and, like, terrible things happen to them. And part of the tension of the Star Guardians is, like, how do you deal with that knowledge? Like knowing that as a Star Guardian, you're destined to burn out, like terrible things are destined to happen to you. That comes part and parcel with it. What if Urgot was someone who was a veteran Star Guardian, someone who's been a Star Guardian for a very long time, and who has taken a very serious beating over the course of his life, like who has fought all kinds of monsters, who has seen all kinds of shit, and who has had to replace parts of his body with prosthetics because like, yeah, he's been through some shit. Like, he's been through all of the bad stuff, and yet somehow he has found a way not to burn out, not to fall, not to go hollow. Like, he has found a way to carry on and keep his light alive inside of him, and now he's shown up to be a mentor to the young Star Guardians. Like, an, like an, yeah, an old man being a Star Guardian, like, who's, who's part of a machine that he uses to still keep fighting, and who's, like, a mentor and a guide to Lux and the other Guardians. Like, there are ways you could do this. There are ways you could make this work. But Riot just kind of went, ha <laughs> Urgot Star Guardian, that's stupid. And they made this. And it's a cop-out, and it sucks. I don't like it. I don't like it. Ow, 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 hot, ah. Ah. <sighs> Warm tea. So yeah, there we go. That is my tier list. It's not an objective tier list. It's a very subjective tier list of the Star Guardian skins as they exist now. We have a pretty even spread, I think. Like most of there's a little bit of a weight up at the top for the perfect and great, but a bit of a bell curve where most of them are hanging out somewhere in the middle. Some of them need a little bit of work and a few of them are bad in, uh, in my opinion anyway. So to finish out, um, this is the this is the tier list. Like, if that was all you were here for, thank you very much for tuning in. You, you you can go now. But to finish out, let's talk about what other characters might be good for Star Guardians. And let's talk a little bit about the Star Guardian line in general. Like, what should be done with it, um, and where it it might want to go. Star Guardian Akshan. He's not canon yet. He doesn't have a skin. Um, but no. Uh, but yeah. Um, and there's a lot of ideas popping off in chat. Star Guardian Cassidy. Like, let's start with that. Star Guardian Cassidy. 
I don't think Kassadin should have a Star Guardian skin, but he should have a skin in the Star Guardian universe. I want... How would you say this? Dad, 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 Sadin. Kassadad, Kassadad. I want a Kassadad skin. I want a skin of Kassadin as like an ordinary working man. Like, like think of um, Corporate Mundo. I want that, but for Kassadin, like where he's like an office worker or whatever, like he has a, like, like he has hot coffee uh, in one hand, like is running around with like a piece of toast in his mouth because he's late to everything all the time. And he's like Kaisa's dad, who is always running himself ragged, like doing way too much work and doesn't notice that his daughter is a star guardian. Absolutely. I'm fully 100% on board with that as a, as a skin in the Star Guardian universe. Um, like, exactly the same reason why I want KDA Kassadin, but that's Kassadin as, like, um, as, like, the proud dad of Kaisa, who's, like, like got, uh, got, like, KDA merch on and, like, is cheering with, like, glow sticks in the audience. I want that. Absolutely. Um, that would be fantastic. Uh, definitely not Kassadin. Yeah, that kind of thing. Um, but the first part of the discussion we should probably focus on, actually, is should there be any more Star Guardian skins? Like, at this point, maybe we have enough Star Guardians. Maybe we don't need more Star Guardians right now. Maybe that's... Maybe 400 billion Star Guardians that we have, maybe that's enough. Maybe we don't need to add more characters into this. Maybe we need to take some time to spend, like, to actually explore the stories of the characters we already have. Something to consider. Like, and... As we talked about previously, Riot doesn't give a shit about that. And I don't mean the people at Riot who work on the skins. I mean, Riot the Corporation does not think of the Star Guardians as a story franchise. They think of it exclusively as a cosmetic. Like, that's all they... Th and everything exists in service to that. Like, so when they allow the writers to write stories, when they allow people to make, like, sessions tapes and music videos and all of that shit. When they let the right the rioters do that, it's all in service of promoting the skins so that the skins will be sold. Right? So that's that's Riot's corporate perspective is like they don't really care about the story. They don't really care about the lore. They don't care about the characters very much. They care that profit can be wrung out of this IP continuously. Um so from Riot's perspective, yes, there will be more Star Guardian skins. Like, especially if this event is even half as successful as it seems to be, there will be more Star Guardian skins. They will, they will, sh they, Star Guardian Ash, Star Guardian Ilawi, Star Guardian Ka Katarina, and fucking, like, Star Guardian Garen, I don't know. Uh, Star Guardian, all of them. Absolutely. Star Guardian Callista, probably. Star Nemesis Hecarim, sure. They will they will shove out more skins into this skin line for as long as it pays. For as long as they get money out of it, they will keep shoving out more skins, whether or not there's any good reason to... Like, whether or not the character needs a Star Guardian skin, whether or not the character... Like, whether or not making them a Star Guardian does anything good or interesting for the story of the Star Guardian universe, they'll keep making them. So should there be more Star Guardian skins? I'm kind of starting to feel like no. Like, I feel we have enough, but there will be more Star Guardian skins. Absolutely there will. Um, and so that being the case, who should be a Star Guardian? And as pe someone is pointing out, uh, people are pointing out in chat pretty much all night, um, as I've been going on about this, Star... Guardian, Star Nemesis, whatever. Aurelian Salt is an obvious pick for a Star Guardian universe skin. And I think it should be the first star. Like, I think Aurelian Sol should be the first star. So the first star is the entity that empowers all of the Star Guardians with their powers, right? And it does that so that they will fight against the things that are trying to snuff out the light in the universe. Um, Because, like, there's, there's things that are trying to kill all the light, kill all kill all the stars. Aurelian Sol is the perfect match for that because as if you listen to like Akali's voice lines and if you if you like sort of read between the lines of the lore, the first star is like not necessarily a good guy. Like not necessarily evil, but not necessarily a good guy. Doesn't seem to care that much about its star guardians individually. It doesn't care that much about their individual lives or whether or not like they are traumatized by the things that they do and they see. 
um, it doesn't care that much if they fall. It just cares that there are star guardians out there protecting the stars. Um, and Aurelian Sol is like, he's already a good fit for that. Like, cause Aurelian Sol is already like this extremely self-concerned, like, oh yes, my stars, my stars are the most perfect things in the universe. You should be honored to die to defend my stars. Like that's already Aurelian Sol's, um, personality is he's, he's, he's this arrogant, self-concerned, like very self-regarding, like, like very above it all superior character who doesn't really give a damn about individual people, but he cares a lot about his own creation, which is the stars. Um, so I think he would be a perfect uh, fit for being the first star in the star guardian universe. Um, like someone who's not necessarily evil, like who's not who's not evil, who's not trying to hurt the Star Guardians, but who's just like, no, yeah, obviously you should be honored to die as Star Guardians to defend my stars because my stars are the best thing in the universe. And if they go out, the entire universe is gonna die. So you should be happy to do all. Why are you crying? Why are you crying? Shut up! Stop crying and start fighting monsters. Like that would be the kind of vibe for him. Like not evil, but callous. The next thing, and people are saying this in chat already, I see. Um, the next thing would be to build out the roster of villains. And I fully agree with this one uh, because we have we have a lot of heroes. <laughs> we have many hero. We have just so many heroes, truly so many Star Guardians. We don't have a lot of villains for them to fight. We have Zoe. We used to have Zaya and Rakan. We technically still have Rakan in the lore. <laughs> And then we have Fiddlesticks, and then we have Morgana. That's kind of it. And everything else is just like a generic evil star void monster or whatever. Um, so I fully agree with building out the roster of villains. And I think the void monsters are like a natural place to go to that for that. Like, I think Kha'Zix especially and Cho'Gath are like natural places to go for that, right? Um, like, as the monsters that they fight, right? Like, so I wouldn't say like... I would say that Star, like uh, Star Nemesis Cho'Gath, shouldn't be like a fiddlesticks. It shouldn't be like, uh, like this singular powerful entity from beyond the stars. Star Nemesis Cho'Gath and Star Nemesis Kha'Zix should be like, no, no. This is just like this is like one ordinary enemy. Like this is like one normal bad guy. This is what they look like. Like this is the kind of shit they fight. Some some creatures that are not that special. Like there's hundreds of thousands of them but which are the monsters from the Star Guardian universe, the kinds of things that the Star Guardians go up against. Rek'Sai would fit into that category as well. Um, whereas, and someone in chat is saying Star Nemesis Belveth, whereas Belveth, a character like her, should definitely be more like Star Nemesis uh, Fiddlesticks. Like, should definitely be more of an actual, like, supervillain, right? Like, should definitely be someone with a more personality um, who's not just, uh, like, a mindless monster. <laughs> Evelyn should get Star Nemesis. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm not sure, actually. Like, I think Evelyn... I'm sort of going back and forth on it in my head right now. Like, Evelyn is like, yeah, but we already have Morgana. Like, we already have Morgana, and Evelyn would just be like that again. So I'm like, I don't, I don't think we need more... Star Nemesis Morganas, because we already have one. Um, so I don't know that Evelyn would specifically be good for a Star Nemesis. I think if we were gonna do Evelyn, I think she should not be like a a monster enemy, but she should be like a social enemy. Like she should be a mean girl. Like she should be like a rival high school girl who like hates Lux for some or, or Ari or something. Like who has some sort of petty bitch bitchy like um high school girl rivalry with her and who was like given like Morgana finds her and gives her superpowers of some kind like evil powers of some kind that she can use to be a bitch um to the other star guardians like in in school and like like steal their boyfriends or whatever um like like that that feels more like the kind of thing that that Evelyn might be good for um if like since we already have Morgana if we absolutely must Star Nemesis LeBlanc, again, that's just Morgana again. Like, I, like, it's just Morgana again. I feel like we shouldn't overload on those. We need we, we need a variety of villains. So Star Nemesis Viego, for example. I think Star Nemesis Viego has potential because 
again, Star Guardians, like magical girl stories, have a tendency to be all about adolescence and growing up, but specifically from like a female perspective. So like toxic boyfriend, like a villain who's like the embodiment of every toxic boyfriend anyone has ever had. Absolutely. Like that's a good concept for a magical girl villain, like someone who sort of thematically stands in for that. Viego could work. Um, like someone who's been in love, like, yeah, Viego was in love with this star guardian called Isolde once upon a time. And then, like, he meets Lux and he's like, oh, you look exactly like her. And then, like, he becomes obsessive over Lux and he becomes, like, really shitty and toxic and manipulative towards her. And he has, like, evil super hearts. Sure, that could work as a, as a, as a storyline. Um, like, something like that. Because that's also, like, it, I don't know how many people have read uh, Sailor Moon, but that's a classic storyline from Sailor Moon. Is that Sailor Moon looks exactly like this lost space princess from long ago. And like a bunch of people are obsessed with her because of that, and like it's not really her fault, but they like they're all sort of pursuing her in that way. Um, so like adapting that kind of storyline would work. Yander Viego, yeah. <laughs> Warwick, Rengar, Kindred, or a different furry star bait, star guardian nemesis. Yes, like Kindred would work. Um, I could I could see star nemesis Kindred. Um, working out for this particular kind of role because again, that's a different kind of thing than either Fiddlesticks or Morgana. Um. Absolutely would work. Tuxedo Mask Twisted Fate. Yeah, I mean, that, that one's kind of up. He already has a top hat skin, though, so I don't know. Um, but yeah, Star Nemesis Kane? Yeah, no! Star Guardian Kane. Star Guardian Kane, if anything. And then, like, he can either choose... Like, he can either succeed and, like, like stay a Star Guardian and not fall. Or he falls and becomes evil, and that's a transformation to Rust. That could work, I suppose. Have Singed be a monster maker for the universe? Yeah, like Singed could be like an evil scientist in the Star Guardian universe sense, like someone who, someone who captures Star Guardian familiars and turns them into monsters. Sure, why not? I don't know how that would work with his ability kit though. Like I don't know how you would make that work with his character model. Um, put that word, Star Guardian. Bard could work um, in the Star Guardian universe as well. Not as a Star Guardian, but like as a cosmic entity, like something that's other than the first star. Like, another cosmic power that exists um, and, like, tries to bring balance to the universe or whatever. Like, who doesn't stand for the light or the dark, but who's somewhere in between? That could work. Um, Singed could be the teacher from this year's story. Yeah, like, uh, Singed as the creator of Star Nemesis Fiddlesticks would be interesting. Although I think it's better if, if Fi Star Nemesis Fiddlesticks is just, like, this ancient thing from beyond the stars, from like, from beyond the veil of time, kind of thing. Adopted father Yasuo. No, no, no. In the Star Guardian universe, Yasuo should just be like Talia's dad. Or her, no, 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 no. Delinquent Yasuo. And he's Talia's older brother, who's like a delinquent who always gets into trouble. But he always protects his little sister. That could work. I mean, I don't know if that would be specifically Star Guardian themed, though. That would be more like Academy Yasuo. Um, but, you know, that, that would overlap a little bit with that. Um, which is the other thing, like... Star Guardian Zed? Yeah, No, I'm not feeling that one very much. Um, but yeah, Star Nemesis Malsahar could work. Like, Malsahar as this, uh, like, star sorcerer kind of character who calls forth monsters and like he's part of the reason why the star guardians have to fight so many monsters absolutely that could work um something like that could definitely work i but anyway uh, i'm responding to chat a bunch here i wanted to say star guardian ash just because a star guardian with a bow yep i think that works like i think that's a good weapon for a star guardian to have like i think that brings a little bit of like weapons variety to it i think star guardian ash could definitely work um I, and I like like we already talked about this previously um, in the stream, but Star Guardian, like older Star Guardians, who are like adults who have been Star Guardians for a long time, and who aren't like teenagers, that would be interesting to me. Um, so like Star Guardian Lawi, for example, Star Guardian Renata Glask, for example, if you must, um, who sort of have their own agenda, maybe. Um, that to me would also work. Star Guardian Zeri. Yeah, I mean, she'd be a natural fit. I am sure, like, if Zeri isn't too unpopular in a year from now, she'll be on the block for, like, a Star Guardian skin at some point. Like I said, Riot will make more Star Guardian skins. They will. We can't stop them. 
So, like, every female character who can fit into a cute anime girl costume um, will probably get a skin at some point. So long as it's profitable, they will at some point get a Star Guardian skin. Um, Star Veterans would be those old ones. Yeah, like, that would be interesting. Um, more fallen Star Guardians would also be interesting. Like, since Saya and Rakan seem to be redeeming themselves now, more fallen Star Guardians could be fun. Um, like, Sichuani, for example, could be a good fallen Star Guardian because she's so violent already, right? Um, as like a, 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 like the sister of Ash who fell, and they were Star Guardians together, but Sichuani fell to the darkness, and now Ash is on a quest to try and bring her back. That kind of thing, that would work. Noodle Man as a champion, please. I don't know what that means. Star Guardian Vein, anti-hero guardian? Maybe, yeah. Um... Fallen Guardian Aatrox? No, Aatrox would be better as just a straight-up monster. Like, he would be more of a star nemesis kind of kind of creature. Uh, I would say Kaiju. Um, Kaiju Aatrox. That's the other thing I forgot to talk about, is that Kaiju are canon in the Star Guardian universe. Um, so we could do all kinds of things. We could have, star like, Kaiju Malphite. Uh, Kaiju Scion. Kaiju, uh, Kaiju Aatrox. Like, those things would, would be viable options within the Star Guardian universe. Um, Star Nemesis Tarek? No, yeah, I'm... If Star... If Tarek gets a Star Guardian skin, I would like him to be, like, a Star Veteran. Like, a veteran Star Guardian who's, like, been there and seen everything and who's, like, coming... Like, was trying to guide the young Star Guardians or something. Diana, Leona, Star Nemesis duo. Oh, yeah. Like, Leona and Diana would be perfect for, like, a fallen and non-fallen Star Guardian duo. And I would like Leona to be the one who's fallen. Like, Diana is the one who's still holding on to her ideals, and Leona is the one who's fallen to darkness. That would be good. Star Guardian Lilia? I mean, yeah, I guess, technically. I'm not sure how you would do that. But again, I guess they already have Nico, so it's not like they can't be creatures. Uh, no, yeah, actually, yeah, like, Lilia is a normal girl until she transforms into a Star Guardian, and then she becomes the deer. Sure, that could work. Why not? Fallen Victor against Star Guardian Jace. Yeah, absolutely. Like, any dualities would be interesting, I suppose. Um, Mordekaiser, make him a Horde, Hordak Prime from she -Ra. Yeah, Mordekaiser could work. Like, Mordekaiser could work as a villain. The thing is, like, the thing to remember is not every villain and monster in Star Guardians has to be connected to Star Nemeses. They don't have to be connected to, like, the villains that already exist. Like, it, within the, the scope of magical girl fiction, you can have, like, monsters from multiple different sources. And enemies from multiple different sources. Um, so, yeah. The other thing is, rather than make new Star Guardian skins, right? Like, mo rather than make new skins for uh, new characters into characters in the Star Guardian universe do lore progression. So, like, Lux now, right? Like, she started out as this young, idealistic, Anshinu Star Guardian, like, way long ago, like, in Season 1, putting together a team, trying to take on the world, etc. Now, currently in the lore, she's been turned into a statue, apparently, uh, ostensibly. And that's weird. Um, but then, like, why not have a lore progression skin for her, where she's become older and wiser and, like, more jaded, maybe? And, like, and, and so give her a skin like legendary Star Guardian Lux. Like, like Lux as someone who's grown up and become like the iconic leader that she used to think that Ari was. Um, that would be an option. The same thing for the rest of her team, like like as the more grown up uh, characters. Like pr a lore progression skin for Akali would be obvious because Akali is falling. Like that's her story, right? Is that she's falling to the dark and Kaisa just doesn't have time enough to be a friend to her. Like, she's resentful because Kaisa doesn't have time to be her friend as much as she used to be. And, like, Kaisa's story at some point is rebuilding the relationship with Akali to save her from falling. So, a fallen Akali Star Guardian skin who I feel like would be an obvious place to go. Younger Ari. Yeah, you could go back in time as well. Like, you could go back in time to, like, the original team of Ari Star Guardians when they were young Star Guardians. Like, give her an outfit that's more like Star Guardian Lux, that's, like, more young and sort of childish and optimistic. Sure, you could do something like that. Um, Heimerdinger as a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think the teacher, like, I don't think there's that much to be mined from. Like, I think it's it would be difficult to do, like, 
like and like uh, civilian skins in the Star Guardian universe in that way. Like I want Casadad, but I also like. It's also like a difficult pitch to get him in there because like in the lore of Star Guardians, he wouldn't have any powers. Like he would have no superpowers whatsoever. Um, so, you know, um, or just make corrupted versions of all the Star Guardians. Yeah, I mean, you could, you could make corrupted versions of all of the Star Guardian skins that we have already. Like, like what if they fell? What if they became evil skins? Like a multiverse thing. Um, absolutely. You could do something like that. <sighs> anyway, um, I think that was more or less all that I wanted to talk about. And chat is going real fast. Uh, but if you guys want to talk about something, bring it up there. And I'll try and respond to you for a bit. And we'll go for another 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and then we'll cut the stream. Three hours. Three hours seems like a good... Hmm. Let's see. Star Nemesis Vex. Yeah, Vex could work as a Star Nemesis. Sure. Um. Yeah. That that would be interesting. Like an evil Yordle in the Star Guardian universe? That could work. Yumi as a corrupted familiar like Kyubei. That could work too. Yeah. Like Yumi as, as a roaming familiar who's like looking for Nora is an idea that I'm, I'm, I've grown quite fond of. Veteran retired Orn. Hmm, not sure. I don't think he should be a Star Guardian. Like, if Orn is there, he should be, like, some sort of other cosmic entity. Um, like, because I do like the idea of exploring... Like, we have the first star, and then we have the star nemeses, and those are, like, powers that exist in the Star Guardian universe. What about other powers? Like, what about powers that aren't affiliated with them? Like, what if... Like, something other than the first star that can give people powers, like Bard? That would be interesting. Renata Glass, Kaiju Defense Force Commander. Yeah. I mean, that would kind of work. Like, Renata Glask is like this grizzled military veteran who's like annoyed that these fucking children with superpowers are like, like who are not accountable to anyone who are like defending the city. No, it's like a military matter. Fuck off. Like, we'll, like Amanda Waller, but Renata Glask, that could work. Like in charge of some secret organization that fights monsters and they, who hates the Star Guardians. Oh, I should read Super Chats. Jesus, uh, they, they've kind of piled up. Um... Oh, God. Oh, shit. I'm so sorry. I, c I completely forgot about them for, for a while there. Uh, hang on. Oh, fuck. I, man, I missed a lot of them. Hang on. I, oh, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. I feel really bad about that. I don't, I don't like missing them because, like, people are paying me money, you know. Uh... Let's see. Ike sent $5 and said, Happy birthday. Thank you. Emperesque sent $5 and said, The sad part is that Star Guardian is probably still Quinn's best skin. Yeah. Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. The champion that released recently with three skins gained two more. One of them being Prestige and just gained another skin, but not on PC. How? Love you. Bye. Yeah, Seraphine has, has eaten well with the skins. Um, just... See awesome ninja, thank you for that five dollars. Willem Engelhart, thank you. <laughs> you want a uh, you want an MP MP4 file of me making uh, making the Seraphine speaker noises, huh? <laughs> that, that, that we can do that. Um, Prestige Syndra is Rift Gala. Oh yeah, absolutely super curvy. What do you think of first star Kindred? Yeah, I mean Kindred could be a, a lock in for the first star. Sugar Rush Eyes, thank you very much for that super chat. I that could work like like cycle of life and death like. Sure, why not? Uh, Wings of Shoe. Playing Metallica so loud that all the glass and half a mile radius evaporates is a weapon. Prove me wrong. That's a weapon. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Gabu, thank you for that super chat. Alexander Reed, you sent like three super chats and they wouldn't work for you, I see. Um, what I'm trying to say is that trans players picked up on it immediately. It's damn stupid they can't confirm it. Yeah, people picked up on Transthalia quickly. It's funny to me how Riot has made one of the most popular fem slash ships in all of Phantom right now, Caitlyn Vi, and then they're still scared of homophobes. Yeah. I mean, the tension is lots, like, rioters, the people who work at Riot, they want desperately to do more. Like, they want to do this shit. Like, there's, there's, been a, there's a huge internal push for it. It's just that they're not allowed to. Like... Let's see, uh, Ruby Severin Whitworth sent the super chat. Thank you very much for that. Waterhorse, my girlfriend is trans and she'd love the pleated skirt on Talia. She gets very anxious wearing skirts and pleats and makes her feel more and pleats make her feel more hidden. Yeah, I can see that. Thank you for that super chat, Waterhorse. 
Dog, dog, woof, woof. Thank you for that super chat. Hound duck, thank you. Um, Star Guardian Hecarim as a Pegasus from Kuhak. That's actually kind of a cool idea. Star Nemesis Pike says Black Fox Draco. Thank you. Uh, Star Guardian uh, Aurelian Soul is a source of power. We talked about that one. Yeah, Wing Shu. Star Nemesis Amumu. Loneliness theme explored. Oh, Amumu as a villain. Oh, that, I, I like that lunatic thinker. Like a villain Amumu. That would be cool. Um, Star Guardian Hecarim is a leader of the Cosmos Stars. Yeah, that could work. Joe Devi. Liliana Del Rey. What about first star Kale as an opposite of Morgana? That could work too. Like if you want, like if Morgana is like the big evil dark villain, then Kale as like the, the light opposing her. That would also work with Kale's personality in that like Kale like is like all about law. Like, yes, you should, you star guardians burn and then they fall. And that's like fine because we need to defend the stars and like law, order, blah, blah, rah. Cabbage Goat, thank you for your super chat. Sluggerboy WC3, thank you for the super chat. Tic Tac, thank you for the super chat. Cabbage Goat, thank you for the super chat. Mac Lee, Monique, Yetis Metis, thank you for those super chats. Uh, Star Nemesis, Ricky64, thank you. Hidari, you retracted it, but thank you for that. Electra Jolt, you retracted it, but thank you for that. And then Cassidy, but the corrupted father storyline, so he's corrupted a fiddlesticks or Morgana or something, and Kaiser has to fight him. That would work as a storyline, James Van, uh, Van Langevelt, thank you. And morally misguided Star Fallen Garen, Star Vet Darius. Yeah, I mean, I kind of want Garen to be part of the Star Guardian universe. Like, I want Lux's family, like, uh, like Big Brother Garen would be kind of a fun character in the story. I don't know what a skin, he, if he should get necessarily. Um, but like Big Brother Garen, um, as part of Lux's story would be cool. Like as a su supportive brother trying to help her out, maybe something like that. Um, that would be cool. Ultimate Sin YouTube. I feel like Jin would be a great addition. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, it feels obvious, doesn't it? Like it feels obvious that Jin would make a great addition. I resist it though. Like I some I feel like it's too obvious. You know what I mean? Like I feel like it's too like yeah, obviously Jin, but that's too obvious, you know? Jin is like I I would rather something else that's like more of a surprise than Jin. Like I'm sure Jin could get, get a great villain Star Guardian skin, but still, you know. Cause like I feel like like Star Nemesis Jin would just be like um, Dark Star Jin or what was it called Dark Gal Dark Galaxy whatever it would just be that skin again. Like I feel like he already has that, so it's like eh. I, I don't know that I would want in the Star Guardians. Um, Star Guardian Nar would familiar without a human. Ooh, as a Nemesis, yeah, like uh, like he's he's a good guy when he's little, and then sometimes he rages out and becomes a monster. That could work. That would that would be an interesting addition. Like that would be an interesting addition to the uh, Star Guardian universe. Like as as a character. Evelyn is someone who needs Star Guardians and feeds on them. Yeah, yeah. Again, like I feel like Morgana just is too much Evelyn already here. Uh, Star Nemesis Zillion. No, I feel like Zillion would work better as, like I feel Zillion would work better as like some kind of. Like, again, think of if we had, like, um, Star Guardian Urgot, actually, and he was, like, a Penny Parker situation, where it's, like, a little girl operating a Star Guardian mech. I could see Zillion as, like, like the grandfather, like, the genius scientist grandfather whose laboratory, like, uh, Urgot was built in, who's just, like, not noticing that his daughter is, like, building all these amazing, like, Star Guardian machines because he's too distracted by his science or whatever. That would feel more like a Zillion role to me within that, that universe. Star Nemesis Azir? Yeah, no, yeah, actually, Azir would work. Like, he would be different. Like, he would be a very different kind of character. I could see that. Like, domineering, manipulating, controlling, but not Morgana and not Fiddlesticks. He could definitely work as a, as a, as a villain there. Is that Zaya and in bad and Rakan in perfect? No, um, that is redeemed Zaya and Rakan in bad and villain Zaya and Rakan in perfect. Happy birthday. What do you think of this first star adjacents being elder stars? I think it could be cool. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Like that, just, like that they're just like really old stars that have like their own powers. I, I mean, I guess I would want something that like eclipses the power of the first star, though. 
<laughs> I gotta pee all this time. I'm waiting for your break. Okay, yes. Yeah. And I think we've gone for like three hours and 20 minutes. That's probably good enough for a stream like this. And uh, I want to get some dinner. So I think we're cutting the stream here. And I would like to thank you all very much for tuning in and uh, just entertaining me on my birthday. Just listening to me talk. Like, <laughs> that's the greatest present anyone can give me. Just let me blabber on about some subject. Um... That, uh, that, that does make me... Oh, uh, there was a super chat there. Uh, super Sentai group with Orn taking the role of a Zordon figure. <laughs> that could work. We need more monsters for the Guardians to fight. Why not a fallen Guardian Yorick with a maiden as a corrupted avatar? Yeah, I mean, Yorick could work as a nemesis. But yeah, the <laughs> another super chat. Happy birthday. Love your content, especially about animation breakdowns. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you all for hanging out with me. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for indulging me. I'm going to go eat some... I don't know. Uh, I don't have anything like snacks in the fridge, but I think I'm just going to go have a nice meal. Um, and then I'm going to go back to work on shorts. But thank you for for making my day a little bit nicer. Thank you for, for tuning into this very impromptu, disorganized stream and listening to me. And I hope you all have a very lovely evening. <laughs>